Right. How's that, Trey? Right. Hey, let's just go ahead and start. Okay. We'll have a record. I'd like to have uh, Father Jim Duffy come and give us an invocation from OLA, Our Lady of the Assumption Church. Dear and gracious God, dear and gracious God, we give you thanks for calling us here tonight as our elected officials sit in council to govern our new and great city. We pray for continued good governance that all of our citizens will benefit by the council's thoughtful and enlightened discussions and decisions. We give pause as our city recognizes the pain, hurt, and suffering of pancreatic cancer that has affected all our citizens and has touched all in one way or another. The call to be aware, to act, to help, to end this most deadly and painful disease. Again, dear God, continue to send your spirit of wisdom upon our elected officials, the city council, and its mayor. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, if you please call the roll. Yes, Mayor J. Max Davis. Council Member Rebecca Chase Williams, District 1. Present. Council Member Bates Madison, District 3. Here. Council Member Joe Gebbia, District 4. Present. All present, we have a quorum. Please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Open remarks, I don't have any. Agenda announcements, I believe we have some agenda announcements. Uh, uh, I have some opening remarks I'd like to make. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm going to stand just because I'm so short. <clears throat> it, it pains me to have to uh, make these remarks tonight because I love our city <clears throat> and I, I truly like and uh, respect my colleagues here, but I, I feel it's a statement I have to make. So it, it'll just be a few minutes if you'll indulge me. Uh, as most of you know, the city of Brookhaven recently won a unanimous victory in the Georgia Supreme Court when the court ruled in favor of the city on all counts of a lawsuit brought by the strip club, the Pink Pony. When we became a city, we decided that we wanted to limit the proliferation of sexually <coughs> oriented businesses, that is, strip clubs, massage parlors, sex toy stores that could turn Buford Highway into a Cheshire Bridge Road or some red light district. We unanimously passed a very strong and constitutionally sound law that we believed would with, withstand the, the assaults that the sexually oriented business often makes on these local laws. <clears throat> we also decided that we would not <coughs> accept a previous settlement that DeKalb made, which was to accept a payment of $100,000 a year from the Pink Pony in exchange for allowing that club to violate its laws. We considered that a bribe and we said we wouldn't do that. So now, we have won a big victory in the courts. We have filed for an injunction, which is the legal process uh, by which you follow to order the Pink Pony to follow the law. And the city has filed an affidavit documenting paid sexual contact in the Pink Pony, where for $235 per VIP room visit, in violation of state law and multiple ordinances, uh, you, can, you can have an intimate experience. The affidavit describes a host of illegal activities, but it's clear that the Pink Pony has been selling sex, whether it's a $10 lap dance or the promise of this more intimate experience in the back room. So here's the problem. The Pink Pony continues to seek a deal from the city of Brookhaven so it, continue, so it can continue to violate the law. Tonight, we'll, we will be asked to vote on a non-disclosure agreement, which is to allow the Pink Pony in the city to sit down and work out this deal. <clears throat> Settling the, the Pink Pony has been a big issue in the District 2 race. I fear that this political pressure will get to my colleagues on the, on the council. 
you know, earlier this year, the Pink Pony offered as much as $200,000 a year to not enforce the, the law against them. I happen to consider any payment other than normal licensing fees to be a bribe, clear and simple. Would you allow somebody to violate the sign ordinance and just let them pay? Would you allow somebody to speed and just let them pay? Would you allow somebody to sell drugs and just let them pay to avoid following the law? So tonight, I'm calling on my colleagues to not succumb to the political pressure from a strip club and don't accept the bribe. At no time has this effort been a religious or a moral crusade. It's really about having legal, constitutional laws and enforcing them. Other cities have gone down this path, but these settlements with strip clubs have only led to more litigation and more problems. Today, the city of Houston, the cities of El Paso, and Horry County, South Carolina, where Myrtle Beach is located, are in court because of settlement agreements with strip clubs from years ago. Well, that's because other powerful strip clubs are suing, arguing that the city's agreement is, in fact, nothing more than a commercial bribe and that it violates the Equal Protection Clause of the U.S. Constitution as well as federal antitrust <coughs> laws. So here's my plea. We won. Let's enforce the law. Let's uphold the Constitution, which poses no liability for the city. Let's be true to our promise to limit the negative effects of these sexually oriented businesses in Brookhaven. Let's not become an equity partner in an industry that exploits women and breaks state and local laws. We said Brookhaven wouldn't cut deals and we would treat all of our businesses the same. And what about the promised economic redevelopment of Buford Highway? You know, the Pink Pony has done a good job of convincing many of our citizens that they're a model business. They contribute a lot of money to the city. I would tell you that both are lies. To date, the Pink Pony has paid the city of Brookhaven over two years $26,000 in alcohol excise tax, and this year they will pay $242 in property city, city property tax. Let me say that again, $242.89 in city property taxes. Oh, and they've been operating illegally without an alcohol license for nearly two years now. There are no past citations of wrongdoing because for $100,000 a year, DeKalb County looked the other way. And for the last 18 months, the city of Brookhaven hasn't enforced because we've been waiting for the Supreme Court to uphold our law. The Pink Pony knows how to play the game. They have been running full page ads for more than a year. I've been a particular target. I'm not sure why, but I think they've been full of lies and misrepresentations even blaming us for the legal fees that they have caused by their actions of suing the city, I feel like I've been personally maligned and harassed. I'm kind of tired of being politically bullied by this desperate industry that is losing in the courts all across the land. So let me just wrap this up. We have won. Now we need to enforce the law, uphold the Constitution, and not entangle the city in any deal with the strip club that sued the city and lost on every claim. Oops. It really will only lead to more litigation, more strip clubs, more sex shops. I will not sign any such deal, and I really urge my colleagues not to follow this precarious path. And so I ask for you, the citizens, to help me uphold our principles and the law and to tell the Pink Pony that Brookhaven doesn't accept bribes and that no means no. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, agenda announcements. <clears throat> uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we do have a, a, a need to amend the consent agenda in order to allow and include a mutual non-disclosure agreement. Uh, this agreement is to be made. Uh, it was made October the 21st, 2014, between the city of Brookhaven, Georgia, and TROP, Inc. Uh, this is asking and JEG Family Trust, uh, collectively the Pink Pony. This is asking for your ratification and uh, would like your permission to put it on the consent agenda. Um, Mr. Mayor, I'd actually like to change that recommendation and amend the agenda to add this consideration and approval of the non-disclosure agreement as referenced by the city manager under new item one. Okay. Under what section? 
new under business. our new new business new business is new item number one I would like to take the recommendation of uh, the city manager and put it on the consent agenda so we can vote on it in the next few minutes well the, the consent is there a motion we, there a motion? I, I'm, I move that we uh, add the non-disclosure I, I agreement. I had a motion on the floor. Was that a motion? He yeah. Was trying, he was trying. yeah, I made a motion. Okay. You meant new business, not new on new, new business. New business. Item. Would you repeat item the motion, board. please? I move <coughs> that we amend the agenda to add the consideration and approval of the non-disclosure agreement as referenced by the city manager under new businesses, item number one. There's a second. I second. A discussion. point of clarification, please, yes. sir. Uh, if that is to pass, uh, then item number one, as previously noted on the agenda, would now become item number two, and right. number two is number three, just right. so that we still have two items on right. that agenda. Okay. 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 <clears throat> All in favor of uh, amending the agenda signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Nay. You realize Aye. what we've just done. We've Aye. just put this non-disclosure agreement at the end of the uh, agenda, so we will kind of bury it after a couple of hours of, uh, of our hearing. Uh, I think we ought to do this more publicly while more of you are here, but I've obviously been unvoted. Aye. 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 So it's going to new business. All right. Um, because I don't think that item is appropriate for consent agenda, which versus a, you don't have discussion on the consent agendas, you just approve them because they're by consent. So it's more appropriate in my mind to put it where we can have discussion about it. Um, I, I, I would beg to disagree. <clears throat> we talk about consent items all the time, but all right, a, you've already voted. Public comment section. Dale Boone. I cannot believe what I am hearing. <clears throat> You've got to be joking me. We are from District 4 where this nonsense garbage, shootings, homicides are going on. We need this thing out of our city. We need those clubs out of our city. We are high in value homes. 250,000, 450,000 million dollar homes. And we're bickering with a club that's been doing business without a liquor license? What in the world is going on here? $242, let me reach in my pocket and give that to you. I'll pay their taxes if you can get them out of here. This is nonsense. You think the citizens are going to put up with this? You just started World War III in District 4. World War III. You're not giving us a chance to get here? Yes, yes Councilman Williams, you're correct. Table this. Let us go back, let us get the neighborhoods involved in this, and I guarantee you, you're going to have a different <laughs> output come next city council meeting. Thank you. Next. James Touchton. Hey, James. I'm Mayor, Mayor Davis, members of Brookham City Council. My name is James Touchton, Government Affairs Director for the uh, Council for Quality Growth. Here tonight to voice the council's support for the Rio Event Powers for Brookhaven that will appear on the ballot November 4th. Beautiful, accessible, charming, and alluring, just a few words to use to describe the city of Brookhaven. In order to preserve these images, the city will need multiple tools in the toolbox to implement key strategic initiatives. The city's comprehensive plan includes recommendations to embark on future projects with the goal of fostering public-private partnerships to spur economic growth. A viable financing option a city can utilize is creating a tax allocation district. TADs offer a flexible alternative to financing economic development without the need to use money from the general fund. General Fund provides necessary resources to sustain daily activity and pays for any administrative and operating expenses. Creating a TAD would limit the need to raise taxes and further reduce the need to use other revenue sources to finance redevelopment and infrastructure improvements. I've read and heard the arguments against allowing this city to have the power to use the redevelopment powers law and frankly I'm quite dismayed. As someone who represents members who invest in all aspects of economic development in the metro region, representing hundreds of companies within the over 90 local governments in the metro region, I have had first-hand experience seeing the benefits of a TAD. For example, with approximately 27 TADs existing in Georgia today, according to a 2007 study in Georgia, of the 27 TADs, three were initiated by a county government, with the 24 initiated by a city government, such as Ackworth, Smyrna, Kennesaw, and Woodstock. Cities that are considered fiscally sound governments with attractive features and a sense of place, much like Brookhaven ha has to offer. 
For example, recently, Halpern Enterprises saw a 2003 TAD reauthorized and will begin construction of a mixed-use development on a blighted property that has stood vacant and blighted for over seven years. In Marietta, the Center City South Renaissance Tax Allocation District established in 23 and expanded in 24 to support redevelopment of two public housing sites near downtown Marietta into sustainable residential mixed-use communities. The TAD was essential in ensuring the City of Marietta maintains its historical position as a central location in Cobb County to enjoy arts, entertainment, history, dining, and shopping by creating the residential base to support and expand a vibrant downtown activity center. If you drive down to the TAD today, you will see firsthand the impact of the TAD as both of the aging apartment complexes were destroyed and built up again with new vibrant, uh, new vibrant mixed use commercial. Used judiciously, TADs offer cities the options to allow for incentives to build gateways, enhance streetscapes, and allow for the development community to invest in areas that are not ripe for redevelopment, such as Buford Highway. In a recent study, the Jaeger Company, in developing an economic development strategy for Buford Highway, found elements of the Buford Highway corridor that citizens agree on that need to be improved, such as pedestrian safety, walkability, and revitalizing age multifamily housing communities. Allowing the, city to power, allowing the city the power to offer a tool such as a TAD would stimulate and engage the development community in this strategy. I just want to thank the city for bringing this vote forward, and I would encourage all citizens of Brookhaven to vote yes for another tool in the redevelopment toolbox. Thank you. Thank you. Next. There are no others. Okay. Go to the consent agenda. Uh, yes. We have five items on the consent agenda, uh, three of which include um, meeting minutes, uh, also uh, an approval of a governmental uh, wireless addendum to our poll attachment agreement for Georgia Power, and consideration, lastly, consideration and approval of the government uh, banner addendum agreement with Georgia Power. Ask for your approval. All right, is there a motion? I move that we approve the consent agenda as published. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? I just want to point out that the majority of these items are, uh, is it three or four legal uh, documents that uh, we're being required to execute to move a power pole from the middle of Ashford Dunwoody Road over to the right of way. Um, it's quite amazing. That's all. All in favor of adopting the consent agenda signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, announcements? Any festivals or anything coming up? No okay. further announcements right. at this time. I, I will make this point I mentioned. Um, uh, our communications uh, department, along with uh, tourism and some other staff members, are starting to work, uh, unbelievably so. It seems like we just did this. Uh, the city's uh, birthday celebration coming up in December, our two-year mark. Uh, so we'll have more information on that. And uh, we do have some announcements that we'll be making regarding uh, other festivals that will be coming up in the spring. You all know about the Cherry Blossom Festival. Um, we have pretty much kicked that off with planning and um, making uh, arrangements to have improvements to uh, Blackburn Park, which will be the host park uh, for that. Uh, I'll also mention, too, that um, we'll be making an announcement soon um, on our Christmas tree lighting. So that's just around the corner, as, as unbelievable as it is with the weather being so warm and beautiful outside. Um, you know, the holidays and, and wintertime is approaching. So um, just please be on the lookout for more information. I would like to announce, I forgot, almost, but hard to forget, uh, council member from Dunwoody, Terry Knoll, is here. So Terry, if you please stand. He's visiting. Uh, he's visited us before. Well, uh, he's the uh, been named the best dressed councilman in the state of Georgia. So <laughs> he's always he's always so finely dressed. So thank you. If you want to say something, you want to say anything? Uh, just greetings from Dunwoody. Oh, well, thank you for coming. Thank you. Greetings back to Dunwoody. Glad to have you here, Terry. Back at you. I did, um, <coughs> Mayor. I did have one announcement. I wanted to. Um, we had an opportunity that was a. Um, uh, an event that was coordinated by a citizen of Brookhaven to have the uh, a representative of the League of American Bicyclists come into our town this past week uh, uh, in advance of his presentation to the city of Atlanta to discuss uh, transportation alternatives and bike paths uh, with the Beltline and in the city of Atlanta. Uh, he spent the entire morning with us here in Brookhaven from 9.30 until 11. We did a 15-mile bike trek. Uh, went and experienced all the different uh, areas of Brookhaven, then came back in here for a lunch presentation where he um, discussed with the citizens and made um, recommendations of best practices for how you 
integrate <coughs> bicycles and transportation alternatives in the transportation plan with the, for your city. So we recorded that uh, presentation, and it is online on our city's website, brookhavenga.gov, where you go to the meeting agendas. And, and um, I think it's just a, a it's normal front, It's line. front and center on the web page. Okay. I'd uh, also like to welcome our chair of our planning commission, Stan Siegel, and the chair of our ZBA, Corey Self, here to the, uh, to the city council meeting. And also Murphy Candler Park, the con Mur Murphy Candler Conservation group is having a 5k race at the park on november 15th at 9 a.m it's called the duck duck goose so please uh i think i'm gonna be starting the race well, if i'll be finishing it but i'll be starting it <laughs> uh and please come out and support the uh, murphy candler conservation group thank you which is, cel which is celebrating the 60th uh, birthday of murphy candler park so that's a great landmark all right um reports and presentations uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, you do have a proclamation declaring the month of November Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Yes, I do. Do I need to read this in the record? Yes. The whole thing? 40 deaths will occur in Georgia in 2014. And whereas the Recalc Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act was signed into law in 2012, which calls on the National Cancer Institute to develop a scientific framework or strategic plans for pancreatic cancer and other deadly cancers which will help provide the strategic direction and guidance needed to make true progress against this, these diseases and whereas it will be very difficult to leverage the opportunities that come out of the scientific framework developed as a result of the Recalcitrant Cancer Research Act, unless sustained and adequate funding is provided to the National Institutes of Health and National Cancer Institute, and whereas federal funding for, fed for medical research is critical to job protection and creation in Georgia, and whereas the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is the national organization serving the pancreatic cancer community in the city of Brookhaven, and nationwide through a comprehensive approach that includes public policy, research funding, patient services, and public awareness and education related to developing effective treatments and a cure for pancreatic cancer. And whereas the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network and its affiliates in the city of Brookhaven, Georgia support those patients currently battling, battling pancreatic cancer, as well as to those who have lost their lives to the disease and are committed to doing nothing less than a cure. And finally, whereas the good health and well-being of the residents in the city of Brookhaven, Georgia are enhanced as a direct result of increased awareness about pancreatic cancer and research into early detection causes and effective treatments. Therefore, be it resolved that Mayor J. Max Davis designate the month of November 2014 as Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month in the city of Brookhaven, Georgia. All right. Proclaimed. There we go. <coughs> Thank you. All right. All right. Um, our next items are the public hearing matters, uh, beginning with uh, the first item, public hearing RZ 14. Dash zero nine. It's a text amendment to the zoning ordinance for concurrent variances. Um, Mr. Scott Hasty, along with um, Ben Song, will be presenting. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Mayor and Council. In the uh, packet, there's an executive summary that was prepared that provides the rationale behind concurrent variances. It also uh, discusses some of the uh, concerns that are often raised in regard to concurrent variances. I'm happy to provide a brief overview of that executive summary if that's your desire. Um, if so, please let me know. Otherwise, I can summarize the, the actual text amendment as well. Um, summarize the text amendment. Summarize the text amendment. The text amendment. One, one of the things that I just want to point out is that education on this issue because this has been a somewhat controversial uh, issue with our citizens so uh, approach it from the standpoint of educating our public about this issue okay as well as us okay if you start with the premise that in a modern world of zoning uh, conditional zoning is the norm um, conditional zoning is or conditions of zoning are typically adopted as part of a rezoning process to ameliorate the effects of a rezoning or change in use. Um, it's a flexible device that basically balances competing interests uh, that then again helps protect adjacent property owners when there is a rezoning or, or special use or, or I should say change in use of a subject property. Um, if you start with that premise, then concurrent variances are a useful and then often necessary component of that type of a zoning process. Uh, understanding that the boundaries of every property are finite, and I guess two, that 
typically there's a threshold level of development and or use uh, for a property to be viable, uh, economically viable, then concurrent variances allow conditions of zoning to be adopted and put into place. Um, anytime there's a zoning condition uh, that is imposed, uh, typically that will change other features of a site. And so a concurrent variance becomes necessary in order to allow some conditions of zoning to be approved as part of a rezoning or special use permit. Um, I know some of the concerns have been in regard to public participation. Uh, I believe that the proposed ordinance actually provides and furthers public awareness and public participation. Uh, under this proposed process, um, the variance would be a part of any public participation plan. So it would be the subject of an informational meeting. It would be you know, within the notice of that informational meeting. Uh, so it provides a further forum for discussion of the proposed variance uh, as opposed to just a ZBA hearing. Uh, two, it would be a part of any sort of planning commission public hearing. And then three, of course, it would, it would have a hearing before the city council. Um, accordingly, I think there's, there's more of an ability to provide public input. Uh, there's also more of an ability uh, by the hearing body to hear or to receive public input because you're having both the rezoning or special <coughs> land use permit and the variance uh, before you at the same time. So you, you would have more members of the public, arguably, uh, who may only have interest in one side of that, but both before you at the same hearing um, for, you know, what are two separate decisions, but which are generally uh, heard together. Uh, one other concern with, in regard to the uh, proposed concurrent variances is that it usurps the authority of uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, I think that's maybe more of a misunderstanding of Georgia law. Uh, Georgia Constitution actually delegates the authority uh, for the exercise of the planning and zoning function to uh, the mayor and council as the governing body of the city of Brookhaven. Uh, is the mayor and council that delegates a portion of that function to the ZBA uh, in its ability to hear variances. Uh, so allowing concurrent variances to become to come before the mayor and council would not usurp the authority of the ZBA. That, that authority is already within the city council's purview. Uh, it's, just a mod it's just an amendment to the zoning ordinance that kind of resets that. Uh, concurrent variances are basically a hybrid between a process that where in some jurisdictions, only the council will hear variances. In other jurisdictions, only a ZBA will hear variances. Uh, this obviously allows concurrent variances to become before the mayor and council when it is in relation to and as part of a rezoning request or a special land use permit request. Uh, that's the only time it would be allowed. That's the only time pursuant to this ordinance that a variance would be heard uh, by this council. Um, and then in regard to the actual, the actual document, most of the substantive information or new requirements within this, within this uh, text amendment are found in section 27923. Um, that just talks about the ability for an applicant to request a variance as part of a rezoning request or as part of a special land use permit. Uh, there were some provisions that were modified uh, pursuant to the uh, request of the Planning Commission. Um, and those provisions can be found under that same section, 923A1. Uh, the Planning Commission requested that, I guess it be more clear that a variance may only be filed concurrently when it is in fact related to or as part of a rezoning. Uh, and that's really, that was always the intent, is you can't, re you can't request a variance for a use that doesn't exist, okay? So if, basically they're requesting it for a proposed rezoning, and so if the rezoning fails, the variance would fail. They couldn't re you couldn't simultaneously request a rezoning of the property and then, two, request a variance that was related to the old zoning. So any sort of variance would have to relate to the proposed new use or new zoning of the property. So if the rezoning was, were denied by, 
by the council, the variance would automatically fail because there wouldn't be, it wouldn't relate to the actual use in the proposed variance. Um, so language was added at the end of A1 just to solidify that uh, the variance request shall be based on the use of the property proposed pursuant to the underlying application for rezoning or special land use permit and the requirements applicable to the property pursuant to the proposed new zoning classification or special land use permit. Uh, additionally, the Planning Commission uh, desired that if, it, this is similar to that, that prior point, that if the um, rezoning were denied, that the variance would also fail. Uh, so as a result, the language was placed into the uh, proposed text amendment that allows a concurrent variance to be automatically withdrawn um, if a, an applicant requests that it be withdrawn. So it, otherwise they would arguably, um, you know, it would be denied with prejudice if they did not do that. So if a rezoning war to be denied, the applicant could subsequently request uh, of the mayor and council that their uh, concurrent variance request be withdrawn. Um, and under this, if they request it, then the, this ordinance states that the city council shall permit the withdrawal upon the request of the applicant. Uh, so it makes it mandatory. And then the third concern um, or request um, for a modification of the proposed text amendment was that separate signs be posted. Um, under the text amendment, the, the variance has to meet the advertising deadlines, the notice requirements uh, of the related rezoning or special land use permit. It wasn't clear that a separate sign would be required. Um, and the Planning Commission desired that there be both a sign for the rezoning and assigned for the variance. Uh, so at the end of section 923B, language was added uh, to acquire that separate signs shall be posted for both the rezoning or special land use permit and the variance. All right. And I believe that's a, that's a summary of the, the changes since the ordinance was last before you. I have a question about the um, issue on the presentations to the Planning Commission and Council, can the applicant um, present the information about um, variances that they might know that they might request at the uh, rezoning hearing before Planning Commission and Council? I mean, and, and, and then if they, if they can, I mean, I guess you, you really can't stop someone from talking about their property, but is there any ability for those bodies, the Planning Commission and Council, to, you know, to affect those future variances that would be heard before the ZBA. And then the second question is, would the ZBA have those comments as part of the record in their consideration? Not without the text amendment, because under the current process, the ZBA is a, sits as a quasi-judicial body. It is a separate and independent body. And so there could not be any sort of a mandate to, you know, or not even a mandate, but just a recommendation that they approve a variance that may subsequently come down the road. Like, that's kind of the issue you get in with when you approve conditions of zoning, but that condition of zoning may not be, they may not be able to, to meet that condition if they don't get a subsequent variance. It kind of puts the ZBA almost in a position of, okay, approve it and everything's fine. If they don't approve it, then maybe the rezoning you know, they can't affect the rezonings, which gets you into other legal issues. Yeah. Um, so would those property owners have still have entitlements if they, I mean, so you're saying that if the ZBA were to uh, deny their request, then they'd appeal it to the Superior Court. Um, they would be making the argument that they have entitlement to, because of the rezoning of the city council? Not in every scenario. There are some, some scenarios where a variance maybe the only way you can affect a certain zoning condition that has already been approved and adopted as part of the rezoning by the council. Um, you know, under the current process, if the variance is denied, yes, they can appeal it to the Superior Court. Uh, right. They have that ability. And under this process, they would still have that ability as well. Okay. All right. Oh, open hearing. the public hearing on this issue. Carol Simpson. Ms. Simpson. 
Um, I'm Carol Simpson. I have lived in historic Brookhaven for 34 years. Um, I am also on the zoning board and the historic Brookhaven Neighborhood Association. I would like to read a letter for record. It was addressed to Bates Madison. I think all of you got a copy. Um, <clears throat> On July 22, 2014, the City of Brookhaven City Council considered a proposed text amendment to the Brookhaven Zoning Code. And at that time, the historic Brookhaven Neighborhood Association voiced our opposition to this proposal. The City, of, the city Council voted to return the matter to the Planning Commission for further consideration. We recently learned that this matter was considered again by the Planning Commission at their October 1 meeting at which they voted to recommend approval of the proposed text amendment by the City Council. One of the HBNA's primary responsibilities is representing our community on zoning and development matters within and around our neighborhood and along the Peachtree Road corridor. Being bordered by Peachtree Road, a major state highway, and a major commercial corridor, our neighborhood has seen significant exposure to development and related issues to traffic, pedestrian safety, noise, quality, appearance, local commercial services, land use, quality of life, and other issues. In general, area properties are governed by both existing zoning ordinances, but also the Brookhaven Peachtree Overlay Ordinance. We have actively been involved in most if not all zoning and development issues and proposed in the Brookhaven overlay district we believe that all changes to zoning and development conditions should be publicly considered and vetted by the HBNA neighborhood residents and the general public only after adequate notice provision for scrutiny and public hearing at our most recent meeting, our Board of Directors reconsidered this proposed amendment to the City Zoning Code, and our opposition to concurrent variances remains steadfast. We do not believe that the City Council should be granted this authority. If variances are needed when zoning is approved, the property owner and the applicant or the applicant should follow the available options provided by the Zoning Board of Appeals. The current citizen's body appointed and serving to review and consider such matters. In conclusion, we continue to oppose this text amendment and we urge you not to approve this proposal. Your consideration of our position is appreciated. And this letter is signed by Lisa Martinez, the president of HBNA, and myself, the zoning committee. Thank you, Ms. Simpson. Thank you. Next. Carol Carstens. Carol Carstens, Ustinola Drive, speaking as a private citizen only. I've come before you several times on this issue. I once again ask that you vote no. Um, thousands of citizens have voiced their opinion for an, and requested a no vote. Um, you've heard from Pine Hills, Historic Brookhaven. I've been in front of you. I've gotten support from Drew Valley, Ashford Park, um, Crosswick, Brookhaven Heights, Brookhaven Fields. Thousands of citizens have asked no. Um, if you leave it as it is now, I feel that the decision will be left with a body of citywide representation who has no prominent loyalty to any particular voter base. I think that's a better representation. The ZBA at this time has become more qualified and has members with experience and background in these matters. No elected officials at this time have stronger qualifications than I feel your appointments to the ZBA do. Um, in my opinion, there is a check and balance system in place under the current procedure with the high request for higher density development, development. We feel that the additional step of going in front of the ZBA will help to control this. The possible denial of a variance request may make the requesters try harder to comply with current ordinances. It has been said lately that a 4,000 square foot home is modest in size, thus the need for the variance. 
in four, is 4,000 square feet really modest in today's standards? Modest enough to warrant stream buffers, side, front, rear, yard, setbacks, and lot coverage variances? How about a proposal that takes into account the current ordinances, makeup of the surrounding neighborhood, property rights of the adjacent homeowners, our privacy, existing tree canopy, aging infrastructure. Thus the ZBA is in sense able to overrule the Planning Commission recommendations in my opinion. Mayor and Council approval by denying the variance request, the project dies or a lot, many times they come back with a better proposal and in more compliance with our current laws and ordinances. Um, the workload and late hours of the ZBA meeting will just move from the city council or from the ZBA to the city council. Um, I, I wonder how much time you're going to be able to put towards vetting these proposals, vetting these ordinances, vetting all of this information with everything else that you have to deal with running the city. It's just another burden on you where I feel the ZBA is more than adequate to handle the procedure that's been put before them. Um, as for appeals, it is the same with the decisions made by the city council. It appeals to the courts. Um, Bates, I really don't understand why you, why you consistently keep wanting to fight this and push this. Your constituents have asked you to vote. That's the position we have. That's what your job is as an elected official representing us is to vote the will of the people. And I ask you all to please vote no for concurrent variances. No others. Okay. Nobody else in the public hearing on this matter? You have, uh, Corey has one. Good evening. I, I know you all expected to hear from me, so. Um, <laughs> Corey Self, I, I am uh, speaking in two parts. One is private citizen and, and concern for what would happen in our city uh, if this were approved. But two, as the chair of the ZBA, uh, you know, I, I see pros and cons to the proposed amendment. I think it would be great to have advanced knowledge at the point that a developer comes in to apply for a rezoning have advanced knowledge that they are going to also need a variance. I think that should be our process already. I think that at the point that um, a developer has come through for a rezoning, it's been approved by the Planning Commission and the Council, and then they come in and apply for a variance. Personally, I feel like that, that variance is self-inflicted, the need for that variance is self-inflicted, and they should be denied just on that premise under our rules. Um, that said, I understand there are situations where you do need a rezoning and a variance. And I think that the Planning Commission and the ZBA would both be better served in our current capacities to have knowledge of that from the beginning where they can make a decision uh, regarding the rezoning and you can make a decision regarding the rezoning with full knowledge of what is at stake. And then we can also make a decision regarding the variance with full knowledge that there has been a rezoning that takes place. Currently, we often don't know that a rezoning has even taken place on a property. Uh, and we have developers or, or you know, property owners that show up and say, I have this hardship and here's why. And we are never told, it is not in the public record, that there was a rezoning done on that property. I have an issue with that. You know, I, I think that the current process allows for three separate meetings, the Planning Commission, the Council, and the ZBA, for any case that would be heard under concurrent variances. That is three separate opportunities for public input that would be reduced to two if this were to pass. For that reason alone, I think your vote should be no tonight. Um, I, I believe that we could put a kind of a hybrid solution in place that would allow for all three of those meetings to take place with full knowledge of what the, the property owner needs or the developer needs um, or is requesting, and we could come out ahead as a city with much better uh, planning and zoning um, uh, decisions. The, the other thing I'd like to address is something that Tim Nama uh, has brought up in the past, and he's not here tonight to raise it, so I just want to refresh your memory. But you as a council, are allowed to go and hold meetings with developers on the front end of a development or a rezoning request. 
we as a quasi-judicial body in the ZBA are not able to do that. And, and I worry, and, and I know Tim worries, that y'all would open the city up to uh, legal issues if you were to go and have a meeting with the developer before a rezoning request, and then later hear a variance for that same property because everything is not conducted out in the open in a public forum. Um, I guess my final point is something that uh, Ms. Carson's just briefly touched on, but I've had conversations with several of you, not all of you, but several of you in the past where a case has come before the, the Planning Commission and the Council and it's been approved for rezoning. And then it comes before the ZBA. We don't know it's been rezoned. We've approved a variance. And on the back end of that, I've had conversations with several of you where you have said, why did you guys approve that? I really wish it would have been denied because when it was approved, we thought it would be denied uh, through the variance and it would effectively make that, that rezoning null and void. Why it was voted on the way it was through the Planning Commission and the Council, I do not understand. But the job of the ZBA is not to police the decisions y'all have made. And comments like that prove to me that y'all are not in, the, in a position to make the decisions that need to be made in regards to the planning and zoning uh, when it comes to a variance. Thank you. I have to ask for the rest of the meeting and the rules on the back so the state no applause. So if you could just please just maintain decorum. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. We have one more person. Okay. okay. So I'm, I'll make a motion. All right. I'd like to move that we deny the, um, let's see, of ordinance 2014. Did you close the public hearing? Oh, oh close the public hearing. I make a motion that we deny Ordinance 2014-07-04, RZ 14-09, Text Amendment, to the Zoning Ordinance for Concurrent Variances. I second. Discussion. Yeah, I would like to have a discussion, just because I think that uh, um, this has certainly created stir, a stir within the city of Brookhaven. A lot of people have uh, been concerned about the um, the power that is you know, apparently being shifted from ZBA to the Planning Commission and City Council. I think that our attorney tonight did a good job of presenting the, some of the facts about the, this uh, concurrent variance. The original intent of this text amendment was to allow for more public participation because the variances are only heard by the ZBA under the current plan. Um, you know, to, to Corey's point, um, the Planning Commission and City Council, even if we wanted to restrict those variances from occurring, we have no way to do that. That's why, the, and then the public record is not currently uh, transmitted to the ZBA. So that's, that is, uh, I think, uh, um, a problem with our current system. This text amendment was originally intended to uh, address that um, and that you would have two bodies that would be hearing both the rezoning and the text or the variance. Uh, but I think that the concerns of the public have been heard here. And we don't want to do things that this city is not comfortable with. So um, my motion to deny is really intended to um, show the public that we do listen to them and hear them. And also keep this discussion open because the current system has some flaws. So let's work together to see if we can find a better solution. I also would like to say that uh, I thought Corey had some great ideas and you know there is this loss of information between when we approve a zoning and then you all get the variances and uh, we need to I would ask our staff if we couldn't start looking at some ways to somehow shore that up or transmit the record or uh, because because I think we have had maybe a couple of things fall through the cracks on that where um, where we, where we could just do a better job. I, I would just say, too, the number of zonings that we get that include a concurrent variance are really few and far between. As far as I can remember, we've had, I can only count two. There may have been more than that in the two years we've been a city. But, uh, but, but it does come in, um, and, and there's an argument to be made to have one body look at the total package and make sure the site integrity is maintained and that the, uh, 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 
and, and it, there are some reasons for it, but I, I totally agree with Bates that um, we, we don't want to cut the public out of, out of any part of the, uh, the process. We want to hear from you. And, um, you know, the more meetings, the, the better. I'm, I don't want to take any of your long agendas away from you at the, uh, the ZBA, so I'm happy for you to take care of those issues and uh, I'll proceed forward. Thank you. Ben, did you have a comment? Well, I just wanted to state uh, for the record, in terms of rezonings that do come through, what we try to share with the developers um, is that to provide all information associated with the new development. If that includes a variance, that is highlighted. Uh, a case, a prime example is uh, uh, Roxborough, Wright Avenue. The whole premise of that development was predicated on a variance being approved or a variance being part of the development aspect. That variance was shown up front on the plans. Another case that will be coming before you next month, uh, which is a rock haven that has been deferred currently by Planning Commission, that also references all variances associated with the development. So in terms of the information, that obviously the information is not directly uh, presented to the ZBA, but on the other fact, being that it's a quasi-judicial aspect associated with the ZBA, um, those records would have to be presented in rec you know, as part of the, the meeting itself to be part of the record for a ZBA. It, it functions differently. Um, so with that said, I mean, obviously the site plans for Rock, uh, Roxborough Wright Avenue, those were transferred directly, the same site plan that was approved for the, uh, the Planning Commission as well as City Council, which identified, again, from the beginning, a variance application or a variance notice. In addition to that, uh, staff does, obviously, if there is a variance and if there it was a rezoning that impacted the sort of variance going before the ZBA, we do present that before the board. Uh, like you said, uh, Councilwoman Williams, there hasn't been that many mm -hmm. that have come before uh, the city in terms of a, both a rezoning or a special land use permit associated with a variance. Um, like I said, those are the examples that I brought up, uh, the other one being Ashford Green. But everything has been presented overall, and even in the staff reports for the uh, rezoning aspect, we always make sure to provide in terms of the background inf information uh, to state that there have been variances requested as part of the request, and we also state that it would have to go before the Zoning Board of Appeals. So I just wanted to make, provide that clarification. Uh, thank you for the explanation that you gave. Yeah, thank you. From Bovis Colin Birch. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say that, um, you know, I listened to your points, and they made a lot of sense, and I listened to Terrell and Corey and other folks, and they made a lot of sense as well. Um, my issue with this from the beginning, as evidenced by the fact that we originally sent this back to the Planning Commission for reconsideration because we didn't feel it had been, we had been educated enough and we don't think the public had been educated enough. So that is my concern with this is that not that, that concurrent variances are a bad thing for the city, it's just that if our citizens don't understand every aspect of it, I'm not comfortable moving forward with it. And that's, that's what it's based on for me is that until we can educate folks and maybe put some changes into the way that some of the suggestions Corey had were very good. Um, I think that an issue like this, when, when there's been quite a bit of citizen uh, emailing and calling and talking to us about uh, people being a little nervous about this concurrent variances, I think it's wise that we um, don't adopt it at this time. Maybe it comes back in a different form at some later once we've had an opportunity to dialogue with members of the ZBA and the Planning Commission and and uh, citizenry on what might make our system a little bit more efficient, what might lessen their workload a little bit in a way that makes sure that it's transparent from beginning to end and uh, that we people feel comfortable with delegating or, or changing the authorities that we already have established as a city. So um, I appreciate your hard work on this, staff, <coughs> and I appreciate the Planning Commission considering it again. Uh, and I, you know, I know you all saw it twice, and it's just that uh, we have to make sure that our citizenry fully understands what this is all about before we move forward with it. And I just don't think we're there yet on this. If we ever get there, I don't know, but we, we, we might need to have some changes before we, we bring this up again. So again, thank you to citizens, staff, and planning and ZBA. Mayor, yeah. Mayor? Sure. Um, I'd just like to say that uh, I think we have a system that's working pretty well right now, and uh, I think we're getting better at it. Um, so um, personally, at this particular time, I don't see the need for us to have to move in this direction. That being said, uh, interesting tonight what's come up as far as some of the comments and I think we've got some homework to do to make sure we're maybe communicating 
uh, information a little bit better. Most importantly, Mr. Mayor, you just hit the nail on the head. I think we need to be taking a, a fresh approach and when we're coming up with issues like this, part of the planning on this needs to be to make sure that we're proactive in our communication to HOAs and communities. Get our information out there so the facts are, I mean, if you were so committed to this that it was the right thing to do, let's make sure that people really understand it because I don't really think that it was communicated well or education was uh, really done to the degree that it could or should have been done. Um, and then let it take its course. But I think we want to be more proactive in the information that we put out and maybe be a little bit more creative in how we go ahead, go about doing that. Thank you, Joe. All in favor of the motion signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, the motion carries. Next. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, if I could just um, point your attention to item number two and item number four. Both of these cases, beginning with RZ 14-18 Rockhaven Homes, uh, for a rezoning request from are we um, Oak Forest Drive and then the second one is the rezoning request RZ 14-14 uh, property um, consisting currently of R75 to RA8 both applications and applicants have requested a withdrawal without prejudice uh, they have been heard by the Planning Commission requesting the same uh, and it has uh, now appeared on your agenda so uh, you may want to address both of these and um, either attend to the request that they've made or you certainly could open the public hearing and um, hear the request. The applicant for item number four, um, uh, my understanding is they're not here this evening. Uh, I think there is somebody here representing uh, item number two, which is the RZ 14-18. Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to have a public hearing because there might be some folks here from the neighborhood who wanted okay. to express their thoughts on it. But first... I know it was freezing when we came back from executive session. Now it's getting hot again. So can somebody, Brad or somebody, bump the air on again? A lot of bodies in here. I know it's it. Just, oh, is it Bates? It. All right. <laughs> Handyman Bates. All right. Um, so we'll open the public hearing on item. RC 14-18, Rockhaven Homes. Um, All right. Mr. Dillard. No, no um, I think comments? I think Julie's here. Okay. Good evening, Mayor Davis. I'm Julie Sellers here on behalf of the applicant. I'm an attorney at Weissman, Noack, Curry, and Wilco. The applicant has, um, this was a comp plan amendment that was originally requested based on a site plan in conjunction with some rezonings. The site plan has been uh, changed and we no longer need a comp plan amendment. I request the City Council to permit a withdrawal without prejudice of the comp plan amendment, which is the RZ 14-18, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. No questions? Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have any? No, no. others. All right. Is there a motion? We'll close the public hearing. Is there a motion? I, I move that we close the public hearing. I opened it, yeah. I'll close it. It's closed. Okay, got it. And this, is there a motion on the item? Uh, I, I will move that uh, we allow RZ 14-18 Rockhaven Homes LLC uh, to withdraw without prejudice. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Next. Um, since you're going to hear the, um, the matter for item number four, we'll just move on to three then. Okay. All right, item number three is a public hearing, RZ 14-15 Peachtree Park Partners LLC, Andrew Hoder, rezoning request from R100 to R60 to subdivide one lot into two lots for development of a single family detached dwellings. Uh, Mr. Song has this presentation. Thank you, you Mayor and Council. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, stated the rezoning is a request from R1. The public hearing. Okay. Uh, the rezoning is a request from R100 to R60. Currently, it's, uh, it's a single lot that is uh, 1.468 acres in size. Uh, the subject property is located in the suburban character area, which allows up to eight dwelling units uh, to the acre. Essentially, the request is to subdivide the single lot into two. Even with the subdivision, uh, tracks one and two uh, would maintain substantially larger Lot area uh, then is uh, what is the minimum required for R100, which is 15,000 square feet. Track one, as proposed, would be 28,906 square feet, and track two would be 35,024 square feet. Uh, staff felt that 
the request to R60 would work as a transition from the existing R50 uh, as part of Regency Park that extends west from uh, Chambly Dunwoody Road. Essentially, it would function as a transition from the R50 to the R60 as proposed within the R100, which is also adjacent to the Kittredge Magnet School. So we felt that, again, this transitional use would be appropriate. With that said, the R60 has been requested essentially uh, with the subdivision. It would establish the lot width to be 74.71 feet, which is substantially larger than what is uh, uh, required of R60, which is 60 feet. Uh, but with that said, uh, they would also be conditioned, and I believe the applicants are agreeable to the condition, uh, to be conditioned to the requirements uh, associated with the R100 zoning district, essentially the front yard setback, uh, side yard, rear yard, um, as well as lot coverage. Uh, with that said, staff has recommended approval of the request uh, with conditions. And one other condition that I would like to highlight actually is um, I know there has been concerns related to um, the septic tank proposal. Uh, the condition states that if the applicant cannot uh, be approved by the DeKalb County Health Department for the septic tank, they'll be required to um, connect onto public sewer. So I just wanted to make that clarification. And again, staff would stipulate to the report and state that we have recommended approval of the request. Thank you. I have a, I have a question for staff. Um, are we still in the pub public hearing? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. I'll wait. Okay. Comments? Robert Kruger, Jr. I'm here on behalf of the applicant, so if I, I thought that I was going to have an opportunity, I'd like to Absolutely. save most of my time uh -huh. um, for rebuttal, but just briefly, I appreciate Ben's presentation. I won't waste your time. I know you've got a lot on the agenda. Um, I think Ben pretty much hit the highlights. I'm Julie Sellers here on behalf of the applicant, which is Peachtree. Um, Park Partners LLC, Andrew Hoder is with me tonight, and we're happy to answer any questions, but essentially we are agreeable to the proposed ordinance in your agenda packet at page 187. Although this is a rezoning for R60, the applicant is um, certainly fine with the R100 conditions. It's just based on the road frontage, um, which is what's requiring the R60. It's a transitional category with the R50 next door, and uh, we don't believe this would set any sort of negative precedence for um, lot splitting or anything of that nature. It is, um, as Ben mentioned, substantially larger than the 15,000 square foot minimum for R100 would be maintained by both lots in, in uh, if the rezoning is approved and a lot is uh, divided into two. If I could reserve any time remaining for rebuttal, I know that just to briefly let you know, you've got your agenda packets. Uh, we had 21 people in favor of this. This um, is certainly something that has community support and we appreciate your consideration of it. I'll briefly touch on the septic sewer issue because I know that that has been an issue for some of the neighbors and I can represent that the applicant has been in touch with DeKalb County and will continue to, you know, pursue the um, option of tying into the sewer. As you may understand, when, when you're seeking a rezoning, um, you can't really justify spending uh, all the money on engineered plans that would be required to find out what it would cost to tie into the sewer. So we've got some preliminary information and the applicant is committed to continuing to pursue that. Um, and, and, you know, is, is, has done due diligence and has checked into that. Um, and we'll have, be happy to answer any questions that we have and appreciate your time. Uh, what is that preliminary information showing? Does it look like uh, it's going to be possible to tap into the sewer? It, it may be. And I think um, there's a, there are... Preliminarily, it looks like about 220 lineal feet would maybe be required, which would require an open cut through the middle of the road. I think I'm getting my um, terminology correct. So that's maybe problematic. There are gas lines and water lines along the road. So there may be some, some concerns there, um, but it's 
definitely something that he has been um, pursuing and will continue to pursue. There might be an option of trying to um, get an easement to go in a different direction, to tie in at a different point, but as far as actually going to the through the public right away and tying in that way, um, it 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 is certainly not something that's been ruled out by any means. Do you happen to know if putting a if he was had to resort to septic? There's already one septic on this lot now. If they mm -hmm. had to go to two, would that even be allowed under DeKalb uh, County rules? From what we understand, we have not had any indication that it would not be, and that that there has there has not been any indication that it would not be allowable. And obviously, if we can't, you know, we would have to do one or the other. So if, if the septic um, was not allowable, then we would be forced to tie into sewer if the applicant desired to go you're, ahead and you're do two You're not aware of, I, I was under, the, it was my impression that you had to have at least an acre per septic tank. And this is, I don't know that this, property could afford the two. Is that not correct? Oh, well. Is this your... This is the builder. Is, is yes. Okay. Andrew Hoder uh, with the applicant. Uh, for DeKalb County, it's 25500 is the minimum square feet for... Okay. And so we're in excess of both of those. On both but lots? In, in mm -hmm. each lot. That's mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. um, but in kind of more reference to uh, what Julie was speaking about, we, I met with the uh, DeKalb County Watershed. There are three manholes in the area for various reasons. Only one of them is suitable. Well, one of them is just longer, so let's cross that out. You know, that doesn't make any sense. One of them, there is a ghost piece of property that nobody knows who owns, so getting an easement through that ghost piece of property it will be difficult, and then you'd have to get easements from neighbors. So we're left with one, which is as Julie mentioned, 221 lineal feet. There's water on one side of the road, gas on the other, so you have to go down the center of the road because it's not just staying away from the lines, but the easements for those lines. And so it's a matter of fitting into that. Um, it's, I, to be frank with you, it's up in the air. I mean, I, you know, as far as cost and feasibility of getting it done, we, you know, to try and figure out all of this stuff prior to know whether we even have a, the ability to, to, to do two lots was If a, you have two properties that exceed the 25,000 square foot minimum requirement by DeKalb County, uh, what would keep you from working on the assumption that that would be sufficient? Mayor, if I could just raise a point of order. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. We, we need to close the public hearing before we ask the applicant questions under our procedures. Okay. Mm -hmm. from yeah. right. Stick around for more, Holder. <laughs> um, and make sure that people, the yeah. people have time to speak as well. Robert Kruer. Do you need to put more time on that clock for well, what we just said? I, I made a note. Okay, great, thanks. Well, technically, I believe the applicant will be given four minutes and 23 seconds, I believe, for reserve time, mm -hmm. the applicant. Mm -hmm. Hi. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm Bob Kruer. I'm a neighbor uh, at 4151 Brawley Drive in Gainesboro West. We are uh, just to the west of this property. Uh, I've lived there 30 years, been in Brookhaven for 35. I'm here longer than most everybody. Um, been in work, worked in industrial, invest in institutional real estate for 25 years. Uh, just in disclosure, my wife is a real estate broker who is assisting the seller in this property. It's a, an elderly woman that has the property and uh, it's been sitting there vacant. Even neighbors have used it as a dumping ground. Uh, other than that, I have no interest in the home, but I do have an interest in the in my neighbor's property rights. I think she has a valid reason to try to maximize her use. This dividing this is going to give us two homes that are really more compatible with what's in our neighborhood than is there now. You could build a bigger house; it wouldn't fit in. Um, we were here for the ZBA hearing. Uh, the professionals looked at it. There's no impact on anybody else at all. No traffic, no schools. You're basically adding one house. Um, it's taking a piece of property and allowing it to mo more closely mirror what's in our subdivision. Uh, there are a lot of properties in our subdivision that are less than the uh, 100 foot. Um, 
they have agreed the developer really has uh, gone overboard to try to make this work by agreeing to the R100. Uh, if you drive around our neighborhood, you'll see a lot of new homes built. These guys have built many of them. They're beautiful. They make good neighbors. Uh, it's amazing how many of our neighbors have bought and stayed in the area, and they're doing it because they're doing it right. Uh, there's no reason to think this won't be the same way. They're doing the same setback. These homes will probably have market values 150% higher than what we have in our neighborhood now. Um, the properties to the east and north you've already heard about, they are multi, uh, they're higher density. But you know what, they're great neighbors. They look good, it'll be a great gateway into Brookhaven and into the park rather than a vacant lot. A number of people coming from Dunwoody to the park are gonna pass right by this. Um, <laughs> the one of the Dunwoody folks look, look, yeah, look, yeah. Look, they, look they, trust me, they use the park. <laughs> um, Gotta look good for them. These guys, they're investing more money in their in this project. They're not going to do anything wrong with it. They're not going to arbitrarily clear cut, cut the land. All that's just emotion. The fact is they'll do it. They'll do it right. The neighborhood needs it. The neighborhood will benefit by it. And uh, I would challenge you to go drive around Brookhaven and look at any townhome de development that's out there and say, you know what, I wish I had a single family house there. I wish they had never done that because most of them are great looking and they fit right in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Bill you. Fielder. Fielder. Good evening. Uh, my name is Bill Fielder. I'm a 20 year resident of Murphy Candler Park and I'm here in support of the rezoning case. Um, as a 20 year resident, I've seen a lot of new development come in our neighborhood, higher density development than this, including the uh, Fisher Mansion homes, which are right behind my house. And I initially had some reserve about that, but we worked very closely with the developers and they put in a great development that's been a great neighbor of mine. And I think putting two homes on one site um, in the neighborhood is gonna be a benefit to the neighborhood for all the reasons that the previous speaker uh, gave to us. It's a win-win for the neighborhood. I think the values of our homes will go up. It's a win for the city. It's a larger tax base. I think the price of the homes going in there will be substantially higher than the existing homes in the neighborhood. And I've seen the other homes that uh, this developer has built and they're beautiful. Uh, it would be a real asset to the neighborhood to have this uh, approved tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Stephanie Weaver. Weaver. That's okay. Hmm? Is it on the this this subject though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is somebody else's. Okay. So I have three minutes. Okay. You're tired of seeing. Uh, you guys are all tired of seeing me. I've been up here. This is the third time now. But um, I I, prov I provided you with five reasons to not approve this, and I'm not going to go over those tonight because you've already seen it. But I want to address a couple things that um, have been brought up. Um, if this is a good thing for everybody, then there's why would we have a public hearing about it? I mean, this is the third time that we've talked about this. There's obviously not great things about rezoning and splitting up lots. Um, it's been said before that, well, this isn't going to create a precedent. Rezoning has already created a precedent because people keep bringing up the, the houses that are on the west side of this property off of Shambly Dunwoody. So there's already a bit of precedent that keeps being talked about. Um, the house next to this property is, a, is has frontage of 90 feet. So it actually, this lot, these two lots would not be a good transition in terms of transitioning from the <coughs> R60s closer to Shambly Dunwoody. You'd have the, the R60s, then a 90 foot lot, and then these two 75 foot lots, and then you'd have 100 feet all the way back down. Um, the, um, the one concern that I think is a concern that a lot of neighbors have is that there's been no plan done. I mean, we've seen a site survey of how the lot would be divided. Um, you know, I, I think it's a little unfair to say that it's too expensive to do an engineering plan for the sewer because this is a, 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 a project that's, you know, the developer is going into as, as a business. And as a business, I think they should take the due diligence 
to do the engineering plan to see what it's going to cost to do the sewer because the last thing that we want to have happen is the rezoning to, to be approved. Then he goes and tries to do his sewer and for some reason figures out that he can't do it or can't do the septic and then he abandons the project. Or he can't get the, you know, the tree ordinance doesn't, doesn't match his plan and he can't, and he either has to pay a fine to tear a bunch of trees down or um, he abandons the project because he can't do what he wants to do and leave the trees he needs to, to leave for the critical root zone. So, you know, I think it's, it's a little dangerous to start rezoning stuff without really knowing what his plan is. Um, you know, I've seen a couple of his houses. He doesn't have trees in the front yards of the houses he's built that I've seen. So I don't know what his plan is for this. Um, there are hardwoods in the front in the front yard of those that property. Um, you know, I don't doubt he's going to do a good job, but we don't know what he's going to do because we haven't seen anything. I mean, we haven't seen one thing. So um, I ask you, if you're going to approve it, to please, you know, put some sort of implementation in to make sure that things are done that, you know, we don't end up with a project that's half done because it didn't get approved or, or whatever. And, and, you know, keep, keep that in mind for the neighborhood because we're the ones that have to live there. The developer can go in and out and the seller doesn't even live there right now. So that's all I have to say about it. <laughs> Thank you. Eric Hovdisfin. Good evening. How are you doing tonight? Uh, my name's Eric Hobdesvin. I live in the Murphy Candler neighborhood also and uh, for quite a bit of time. Uh, I heard a develop, uh, uh, an attorney uh, on, a, on another evening here saying that somebody has the highest and best use of their property, which of course is not true. They have a reasonable use of their property. Otherwise, everyone could have put a high rise on their property. What they have a right to do is not to be treated arbitrary and capriciously. And uh, so to me, whether a developer is good or not, shouldn't really play into the game because once you, once you start using that as a reasoning, then you're acting arbitrarily and capriciously. Uh, this property is surrounded by R100 property on all sides except for a portion of the east side. And I've provided you with some maps. The first page uh, shows that there is a part of the Regency Park Walk development that is the uh, R50 that we're talking about that borders a portion of the, of the east side of the property. However, that last lot, lot number 75, was given a 90-foot frontage. That is the transition that DeKalb set up for us. And if you also notice, the R100 is a neat line, and the more dense development is a neat line to the east of that line. This property is to the west of the, of the dividing line. And the reason the other properties got a, we allowed the, the transitional na nature of the other properties was because when they were developed, there were lots that had frontage on Chambly Dunwoody Road, which is a higher use road with uh, office and institutional uses. Or as you can see, they back up to that bank office bu building, a mid-rise office building. So really, to call this the, uh, uh, an ideal solution because it's transitional, misses the point that we've already set up the transition and this property is surrounded by R100. There's a lot left between it, that's R100, and then the school. Right now, the school is currently surrounded by R100. Should something ever happen to the school, I would want to be in a position that I could say R100 surrounded all four sides of the school. I'm afraid doing this opens the door because all of a sudden you have a lot across the street that's bound that that's R100 but faces a uh, R60 lot, the lot next door, the lot behind it. Um, it, it just where, where do you stop doing the transition? Um, also. <coughs> The, uh, what I don't understand about is why they really didn't answer the idea of the sewer hookup. We don't, the cab saying they have not expressed that they won't approve it doesn't really say whether they would approve it. My concern is if it turns out the cab doesn't approve it and they have to do a sewer hookup and the sewer hookup is, is cost prohibitive, that this developer walks away from the project and we're left with an R1, R60 that hasn't been developed yet and who knows then what could happen with that property. But bottom line, this is a bad prece precedent. It's not transitional, I don't believe. And uh, I ask that it be denied. Thank you. Next. Deborah Laziki. Hi. Hi, my name's Debbie Laziki. I live at 1774 West Nancy Creek. 
I'm in the neighborhood for 25 years, and I've been in my home for over 20. I'm also a civil engineer, and I work in the construction industry. I'm against uh, the rezoning of this property. I think that Eric and Stephanie did a great job of stating the reasons, primarily that we already have transition properties on the busy street of Shambly Dunwoody. We have put that in place to preserve the R100s in our neighborhood. We also have that property up alongside a school, and I think that we need to, to continue to look forward to what, what can be done. There are a lot of new families m moving into the neighborhood, renovating existing homes. That's the kind of precedent I think we want to see. We've also seen a lot of the older homes that are run down, like this particular one, where the uh, builder has gone in and improved that single home to something larger and in keeping with the neighborhood. So there are a lot of viable alternatives. And to me, this proposition just speaks to someone wanting to make a lot of money, yet they're not willing to go in and do their planning and due diligence to put, in, put, put them on the sewer system, to put in a tree plan. To me, being in this industry, I've seen this. This is the, don't worry, we'll take care of you, and then later they don't. So I'm very much against this. I don't want to see this start to happen in a big way in our neighborhood. Thank you. Next. No more. All right. Um, do you have some more comments? Just in brief rebuttal, and then if you want to uh, close a public comment, we'll be happy to answer the questions okay. that you have. Um, just want to address the rezoning criteria. The Brookhaven Code sets forth the criteria, and in this situation, the applicant has met the criteria for a rezoning. I think it's worth noting that um, what is being requested here is an oversized lot that is not similar to the lots that are in this vicinity. And by allowing this rezoning, you would not be doing anything that would be out of character with the neighborhood, and you would be preserving the R100 purpose and intent in your code. Um, as far as any indication um, that due diligence is not been undertaken that's simply not true there was a tree survey that was submitted into the materials so that has been done this is not a situation in which anyone has any desire to come in and clear cut or you know do anything like that and the city has rules in place to forget prevent that from happening. So I would submit to you and certainly encourage you to approve the rezoning based on the criteria that you're required to consider that I, I won't take the time to go through it. You all are well aware of it. The applicant satisfies that criteria and we do believe that this would be not only a good transition but an appropriate zoning in light of the surrounding zoning and especially with the conditions that are set forth before you and completely agreeable to the applicant to condition it on all the R100 requirements with the only exception being instead of the 100 foot lot frontage 74 feet. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a question of the applicant? We'll close the uh, public hearing. Is there any more public hearing? Any more public comment comments? All right, we'll close the public hearing. So the question I, I haven't heard come up yet is about sidewalks. I, I mean, I don't know if there are sidewalks um, on this portion of the road or on this side of the street. Um, what, what's the story with sidewalks up there? There's not any sidewalks on either side. Uh, and in that multi or the uh, higher density that's towards Shambly um, Dunwoody. Mm -hmm. There's no sidewalk on that one. Not uh, if 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 I'm remembering correctly, and, and admittedly I'm doing this off memory. Yeah. They have an internal road, and it's on the opposite side of the road, so it's not on East Nancy Creek side. It's on the inside. Uh, opposite side of of East Nancy no, Creek. No, no, no. Uh, of Regency Park okay. Walk. There's a there's an internal roadway in that development. So much behind the property. Right. But, you know, sidewalks and connectivity is a really important issue for our city. It's been pointed out in all of our transportation plans, and I didn't know if you would be willing to consider 
you know, the, the sidewalk issues and um, in the potential redevelopment, if you had a site plant, you know, if a building permit were approved, you know, if the rezoning were conditional to require a sidewalk, if, a, if a houses were built, is that something that you'd consider? I would certainly consider that. I, I would. So like a I would want everyone nowhere. to see. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to build a side. Yeah, I don't want to. You know, we don't want bridges money just to, just to just just to just to have it be a feel good thing. But right. that being said, if it was a benefit, well, um, then and, that would be another. Yeah, and, and uh, Rebecca may have better thoughts about this, knowing the neighborhood a little mm -hmm. bit better. But um, you know, in, in some cases, we've talked about you know developers, you know, contributing those monies. To a sidewalk fund mm -hmm. instead of building a sidewalk to nowhere, you know, if it's across the street or something, but but it is a way to uh, encourage, you know, sure. people walking around, particularly around an elementary school like that. Uh, do you remember? Uh, I'm thinking that there's a sidewalk on the other side of the street. Is that correct? Richard's shaking his hand, head yes. Sorry. Yes, there is a sidewalk on the opposite side of. Uh, East Nancy Creek. It goes all the way from Shambly Dunwoody down all to the, the way down. all the way past the school. Okay, yes. but it's on the other side. It's on the other side of the road. There's no sidewalk. There's some sidewalk. There's a short segment of sidewalk in front of the school itself, but none other than that on the south side of East Nancy Creek. Okay. Uh, a question I had that was brought up by Eric was the issue of sewer to septic, and if you haven't gotten approval. At, for septic and then but if you don't get approved then you leave the lot um, and somebody comes back in and yeah I'm not, uh, any, do you have any kind of concrete um, plan or information that what well you, I mean what what we you, you know I, I guess my best answer to that is that the the due diligence that we've done is that we do meet the requirements for septic tank and the reason why we investigated sewer was because of, um, you know, the public being concerned in in essence. So, the the the, How the many lots square feet is each lot if you divide it. Uh, up? One is twenty eight thousand. The other is thirty some odd thousand. So you're saying that the requirement for septic is twenty five thousand five hundred for DeKalb County. I believe that it's either twenty five or twenty five five. And we had um, soil survey done, and DeKalb County came out and met with us regarding the soil survey. And saying that what is that it is suitable? Person. Yes. I mean, do you understand the concern that if 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 it's rezoned and then for some reason you can't. Get say you hit bedrock or or something. Sure. And you can't get septic, then you and you can't build the houses the way you wanted to, and then we're left with the two lots that have been rezoned to R60, with, um, you know, that, that without you building anything because it might not work. So, I would just be. I mean, I just. Yeah, I, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I, I understand what you're saying. I guess, um, I guess to my mind. You know the idea of hitting so much bedrock underneath the road seems unlikely because no, that know. that's going to have to be the avenue to go. Right. Um, you know what I've kind of committed is that even if tying into sewer was twice as much as two septic tanks, I take that route. Right. Now that's you trusting me or whatever. Short I know, of that, but that's but not short a of that, criteria. You're, you're doing septic. That was the plan. Yes, sir. What's the cost on running the sewer line? You know. That I don't know. I think that if everything went perfect, the preliminary numbers is about forty nine thousand. And the cost of septic would be in the neighborhood of twenty four thousand for I mean it's kind of right on the nose and that's and like I said, you know, it's it's also an issue of dealing with DeKalb County. All right, so so I can talk to somebody on the phone. As a matter of fact, they gave me a map of how I would tie into it. Right. I can call and get somebody else on the phone that's going to say, yeah, but that doesn't work. You need to do it this way. Right. And so, you know, yeah. once again, it, 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 it does become problematic to try and to, in this one situation to figure it all out on the front end. Right. And the staff or, or the conditions, as I see them in the packet, have condition number five, which says if you can't do the septic, you're going to have to do that's the correct. DeKalb mm -hmm. County sewer. Um, I'll say I don't Your make preference it is... It, which is your My preference, preference is, is sewer. Right. It's a more saleable product. Right. I would imagine yeah. it's marketable. That's correct. I, mean, I don't know. You know yeah. I mean, you, you, av you, avoid, uh, you avoid ongoing maintenance. I mean, right. it's, you know, so that would be my preference. Sure. Just to get an idea, excuse me. Uh, just to get an idea of the, um, the layout, as I look at the, um, the, 
schematic here, there's a house that it the divide, yes, sir. It cuts it right down the middle. That's correct. So would you be putting those houses basically in that same area? Uh, it would be in the center of the lot. Right. Uh, of each lot. Yes. And so, yeah, it'd be in the same area. The one thing that I have spoken with staff about is due to, I don't know how average front yard setbacks go when you are in between two different zonings. And that's why I have, we you do. know, once again, <laughs> I've said I'm going to meet all of the criteria of R100. I mean, that's something that, that I don't, that staff didn't request. That's something that we put on ourselves before we ever approached. Because once again, you know, to my mind, when we got started, this was a lot that is far larger than any other lot in the neighborhood. Other lots in the neighborhood are below 100 feet of frontage. I really didn't, I don't, I don't find this out of character for the neighborhood. Even as a transit, even if it wasn't a transition, I wouldn't find it out of character because there, like I said, there are several other lots in the neighborhood that are less than 100 feet of frontage, and our lots, after being divided, will be larger than a, than a majority of lots in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So, um, all of that being said, because the availability to meet the R100 requirements for everything except for the frontage, I'm happy to do that. So, as far as where they would sit. The only thing that I can't say for sure would be the front yard, and that depends on the average front yard setback, how that's interpreted when you're in between two different zoning categories. Any more questions? Anybody have any more questions? Uh, we were just talking about Turn your mic on. We were just talking about the concern of, you know, if you don't get septic or you don't get sewer, I mean, we don't want you to walk away. Sure. So what do you think about that? I mean, I wonder if we could add a condition that, that says you've got to do one or the other. It's, it's already on there. For yeah. I think point that's five. I mean, I, five. I, Do you, you read know, it that way? It's on point five. Yeah, I did. I can't. It, it, I, I'll, this may help. I mean, this, is, this obviously isn't, I don't know, a, you can tell me if it's a condition that you can put on or, or what, but... This lot can't actually be split until the structure is torn down because you can't have two different parcels with one structure crossing the line. So in essence, the lady that we have a contract with isn't going to tear down the lot, isn't going to tear down her house prior to closing because then she'd have nothing if I just walked away. Right. So I don't make it a practice of buying non-buildable lots. And so if I can't do one or the other, I've got to already buy the property, tear down the house, and then to say, well, if you can't tie into sewer, then are you going to walk away? I will have far more into this, to the tune of 10 times more into this than what I'm anticipating the, the, the possibility of sewer would be. Mm -hmm. So that would be my okay. answer. Did you read five, Rebecca? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I just, it's kind of backward to me, but, uh, right. well, you know. Mm -hmm. right. Any more questions? Any more questions for the residents? Thank you. There was a there was a young lady I didn't catch her name with the purple top on in the back. What was your name, please, Stephanie? That you one of your major contentions here was about either hooking up to septic or sewer. Uh, does this satisfy you that it's a condition that they have to do one or the other? Do you want to come Mom up, down. please, because this is a. Uh, going to be recorded for other people to listen to? No, speak into the mic, please. Thank you. So I have a septic tank at my house, and I'm fine with, with septic in certain conditions and certain lots. The problem that I see with the city doing the, approving this is that, um, first of all, the 25,000 square foot that he, that he talks about is true for certain building sizes. Um, a size of you know meaning what you know when houses were built 60 you know in the 1960s you know the ranch with three bedrooms and two bathrooms um you know and and no garbage disposal that was fine now the way houses are built larger with garbage disposals that really affects the the um the production of the material in the septic tank and so you really need a larger tank to accommodate a larger house so the, the size, he, yes, he's correct that, you know, that, that's a, a guideline, but for the size house that I think he's planning on putting in there for the money, um, I think we're, stretch, we're stretching it. Um, Have we heard what he's been? 
real, real quick. Um, Mr. Holder? That point she's making is interesting, obviously, that that the ordinance that we adopted from DeKalb on sewer, or I guess that's it's nice, it's DeKalb's ordinance, yeah, septic septic systems were, is for, did they have, have they not made any modifications to that, or is, is the size of the house have anything to do with the minimum lot size required for septic acceptability? Well, if you don't mind, I'll have uh, Bennett answer that because we did have discussions regarding. It's typical that <coughs> for a uh, septic system to be approved by a municipality, health department, there's a few factors that are going to play into approvability. One would be the characteristics of the soil. What's the perk rate of the soil? Right. Is it suitable for a septic? And then what is the perk rate? What's the uh, loading or demand? That's um, commonly based upon the number of bedrooms. Um, but it may be based upon other factors, as uh, the uh, neighboring resident mentioned, is there are features in the house, such as a disposal. I don't know if that's considered in DeKalb. Um, and the local ordinances requirements may require a reserve area set aside as well, and I don't know if DeKalb requires that or not. So without knowing what the park test is, what the um, features in the house are that would dictate how large of a drain filled area, when you look at the perk test combined with the demand, then a determination can be made as to how large the drain filled area is. Don't have the information to know how that would fit on the property at this point. So the house couldn't be approved if it doesn't pass the cab water and sewer specs for as far as what, it, I mean, they'll, they'll have to submit a site plan and a square footage and all that to, to get the approval for a septic, would they not? Before I would expect there'd be at least some information that to be provided as to what's proposed on the property with respect to number of bedrooms, possibly number of fixtures. Mr. Hoder may have had some interaction with the health department to know what other characteristics the health department would require. But as an example, if you wanted to go on that property with a, um, a large house with a, um, characteristics that would uh, increase um, uh, the evaluation as to how big of a drain field would be required, mm -hmm. at some point you're going to reach a threshold in which you're not going to be able to get a house over a certain size, right. with, typically based upon number of bedrooms. Still trying to figure out the, I, mean, I know it's just taking things to the nth degree, but you know, we've been kind of, not burned, but we had a lesson early on with conditions being stated you know at the podium but not being put into the record mm -hmm. and um, I want to be very clear th that if septic if the house that is being proposed which we don't have a copy or we don't have, haven't seen that yet of course right we haven't seen that is not compatible with the regulations of DeKalb County Water Sewer do they have the right to deny the permit or do we have I mean how does that our approach would be that before we would issue a building permit right um, we would have to have uh, the building plans, a site plan that shows uh, how the site's going to be developed, mm -hmm. and um, substantiation documentation of DeKalb's approval for a septic system for what we're considering to permit, that is, for that house. Um, there are other issues at play, as an example, our tree protection ordinance. Um, even if DeKalb were to approve a septic field, um, if the installation of that, of that septic field would involve so much clearing that the applicant couldn't meet the tree ordinance uh, preservation requirements for what's being proposed, then they'd have to revisit their proposal so that they would meet the tree ordinance, which might require as a possibility of uh, going to sewer or revising their proposal so they wouldn't need as large an area of a drain, a drain field. Then you say, and then, the, then they would come back for variances, maybe. Uh, I suppose, yes, they could apply for a variance to one or more of our ordinances to make it work, um, yeah. and that would be up to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Or they could just do the septic. Uh, the uh, well, sewer. Yeah, sewer. Mayor and Council, you know, if, for consideration, if there is, if you feel like there's a lot of questions up in the air related to the septic tank, mm -hmm. um, obviously you do have the option to move forward with conditioning it, if you like. Uh, to connect to sewer right. um, and not necessarily consider the septic tank request. Yeah, that, that's what I was kind of asking because to me this condition five is almost backwards. It says each lot shall connect to public serve sewer if approval cannot be obtained. And I think we want the first option to be you shall connect to public sewer. 
Yeah, I, well, technically in this case, if that's the case, you, you don't necessarily say, you know, it must be connected. It shall be connected to sewer, right. period. Um, and no other consideration for septic. The reason why it was written that way, again, it was based upon our ordinance that we adopted from DeKalb County mm -hmm. that stated the fact that they would have to go to the health department to uh, be granted approval to move forward with such a system in place. There aren't any specifications as to what those minimum requirements were, and that's why we couldn't necessarily get to the details. Okay. So can you suggest a, a condition that, that might satisfy what, what you're hearing here? I believe it's just a simple modification, uh, simply stating each law shall connect to public sewer. Period. Period. Okay, I like that. I'd like to hear from Mr. Holder. You want to give them a chance yeah. to address <laughs> it. I, I guess my my main concern with that, and which I find to be unlikely, admittedly unlikely, is. What if that winds up being something that does not wind up being feasible? Then you're really tying the hand. Before, I mean, it's almost like if we, you know, and I'm trying to think, and, I, and, and admittedly, I'm kind of drawing a blank here, that if there was some threshold that said, you know, listen, if you can't meet all the requirements, you know, in excess or whatever of, of a septic system, something that would make it Priced that I would be encouraged to go to sewer. I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I, I do kind of wonder if you change the change the zoning and say, hey, we're going to change the zoning and you're required to go to sewer and for whatever reason, like I said, I've talked to DeKalb County three or four different times. I've got at least two ways without the ghost that I can, but I'm not, I, right. you know, I'm not positive. What if I have a, a water uh, easement and a, and a gas easement you, that cross each other right. and but I can't you understand go down the uh, we've had, I, 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 we, we've had, we've had yeah. an instance where a builder or developer came up mm -hmm. and said, yeah, I'm going to do these things. Uh, you know, this is what I'll do. And they had agreements with the neighborhood. Well, it didn't get put in the, as a condition. Sure. And then he sold the property to someone else who didn't have all those commitments, mm -hmm. similar to what Eric was saying. Sure. So that's, that's the concern is that, if you if sewer's not feasible financially for whatever reason, I understand that. Sure. If septic is not feasible under a certain um, financial arrangement or, or or by the lot, then you might have to come to get, get get variances to some of our ordinances to be able to make your septic like Bennett was talking about with the tree ordinance or other ordinances mm -hmm. uh, variances, and and that's kind of what we're we're trying to make it sure. so that we don't come back. Oh, you got your rezoning, but then you come back and say. We want to have a variance for A, B, C, and D, too, mm -hmm. to make my house work. Mm -hmm. And then that's kind of doing a disservice to the neighborhood. M Mr. No, Hoda, I, Mr. Hoda, how about, how about um, it sounds, have, have you spoken to DeKalb County about the size of the property you want to build and what the, what the perk rate is of the soil and I've whether or not you can meet it? I've to discuss what the uh, perk rate and everything like that is, and I have a letter with me that I'm happy to show you. But as far as discussing, you know, you know, counting up the bedrooms and everything like that. No, they haven't done that yet. Uh, have you done it? I mean, do you know what you want to build there? I do know what I want to build there yet, but uh, admittedly, I'm not a septic engineer, and I didn't go that, you know. I've got two avenues to go, and so, like I said, it's not my intention to tear down a house, buy a piece of property, and then not do it. You know, my, my, my thing is I'm going to make this work one way or another. So right. that's a, and, and I understand, I understand, <sighs> what you're saying, you know, I, I, I guess that, I guess one of the things I'm getting confused is, let's just say that somebody bought this house the way it is now and wanted to buy a 10,000 square foot home and couldn't get a septic. They're in the same position. I mean, like that, that I haven't actually changed anything. It, you, you know, I mean, right now it's on septic, you right. know, and it's got to conform to all of the DeKalb County it's standards. Split two. And if somebody, yeah, well, but if somebody wanted to build, let's just say that I'm, and my anticipation is to build a 3,400 square foot home, uh, not including the basement. So if somebody wanted to put a 10,000 square foot wanted to put a, a six or 8,000 square foot home, I'm not sure. You know, it depends on how many bathrooms and bedrooms they have. But, you know, that's... We'd have the same issue. Exactly. Well, and, yeah, and we'd so, have to talk to them about that too, wouldn't we? So, so, well, well, I don't think so. I think it's their you. responsibility to meet the codes right. as they are. Right. And it's my responsibility to meet the codes, you know, and, my, and it's my responsibility to meet the Cab County's codes, right. you know, and so... So what would you think about, uh, if, if we deferred this and gave you a little bit more time, do you think you could find the answer to whether you can do sewer or septic? I mean, I'm sure I can get a lot closer, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean... 
you know. What do you think about that? Because here, here's what happened. We had this conversation tonight, mm -hmm. and then when all the if, ands, or buts came out, if you were going to be coming back for variance, it led us to say, okay, we'll mandate sewer. Sure. And you come back up and say, well, we're not, I'm not so sure that's really the option that we want to go. Mm -hmm. Figure out what it is you want, mm -hmm. and then we'll know. Right now, there's a lot of, there's, there's too much up in the air with mm -hmm. contingencies that we're not aware of that we're trying to avoid. I, I understand. I, I, you know, I guess, you know, once again, it, it, you know, I will certainly, you know, I will certainly do my best, and I'm sure that I could pr that we could have a pretty good idea on the septic tank. The sewer becomes a little bit more problematic, even you know, in 30 days, because once again, there's just a lot of approvals to go through to get somebody to sign off on on what you're actually going to be able to do and then to stand up here and presumably y'all tell me we want a yes or no answer <laughs> gotcha. I'm trying to get to the point that I can give not a conditioned answer so that so I I'm, I'm sorry we're pretty sure I can get one right. one side done the other side I can get closer and then I, but then one of the things that would concern me is that I go do all this and then somebody else changes their mind and for some other reason mm -hmm. they, they do you know they say well no, you know we what, got, we kinda, well, you have to understand we have to be sure we have to think of the worst case scenario I and understand. a couple of them were brought up tonight and so sure. that's our responsibility to say well hey let's uh, that makes sense what if mm -hmm. it or, might be a very small prospect but it it's still there no I, I understand that I and, and I guess I'd also say that the alternative is that you you know we move forward with the rezoning application here with certainty that it's going to be connected to the sewer mm -hmm. as another alternative. That, I mean, that, um, you know, so it's either you do your due diligence in advance and come back uh, and have that answer, or you, I think, is a condition that Rebecca was mentioning just that you have, we have certainty that the lots will be connected to the Cap County sewer. And I guess I'm, I'm probably having a little difficulty wondering what exactly is it, it, it are you all what what exactly do you want to hear the specific answers because I know we've had conversations and I think Andy has represented his desires to tie into the sewer he's done the due diligence he's talked to get information which is what we were asked to do before coming here tonight so I don't want to put ourselves in a position of saying we'd agree to a deferral without having a real clear understanding of exactly what you're looking for and if what you're looking for is a commitment that yes 100 percent we're going to tie into sewer and we've gotten this approval and this is what we're going to do and we've had to you know try to get engineers lined up and get all of this information um or if it's coming back to you to say we've gotten the you know met and have more specificity on the fact that the county will in fact approve this for septic even though his desire is still to tie into sewer if he can do that so i i that's if if you could provide a little guidance as far as exactly what i think you just said it you're looking for exactly that i think certain either yes. okay but so i think she can Rebecca probably can explain Well, I, I think it is uh, more certainty. It's, it's a concern that some of our residents have expressed. Um, I, I completely understand the difficulty of trying to get an exact answer. And the resident, sorry, with, without, without spending, I don't know, a whole lot of money uh, that, that, that may or may not be feasible for this. Let me ask you this. Let me ask staff. If we, if we changed it to each lot shall connect to the public sewer, Period. Now, if for some reason he finds out it's not feasible or it's cost prohibitive, what is his recourse? Does he come back to us and say, this isn't working, folks? We got to, uh, you know, will, still be, will, you, will you look at uh, the, the septic? Well, so, yeah, it would, be a, it would be a specific condition of zoning. In order to change the zoning condition, they would have to come through this process again, essentially. The whole change. thing? It's the whole thing. You could through. donate it to the city as a pocket park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please don't say that. Um, okay. Joking. No, no, no. I wish we were somewhere else. I got some land I'd like to. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, let me just say uh, how one, do we? I think we're, I, I, we I, want I think more we're of all a, on the same page. We are, and we I want. think we just want to hear somehow a, a more of a commitment. I don't know that you can give us a guarantee, but more of a commitment that the first option is sewer. Yes. Period. The first option is sewer. Period. And so, and like I've said, is I believe that if I can get it done for double the cost, I will do it for double the cost. When it starts creeping over 45, 50,000, 
and then you, then you look at I can make the right. septic requirements, right. Right. then I would go the septic. So you'd have to build a house. So to the, the other thing that I'd say, and, and I hesitate to say this because I'm not ignoring their concerns and I'm not ignoring your concerns because I think that it's, it, I think that they're valid to say, hey, we don't want to rezone this. But just from a practical standpoint, the neighbor's on septic, the neighborhood behind me is on septic. Some of those lots are bigger than what mine will be when it's each lot will be subdivided. Some of them aren't. And they, somebody could go by and decide that they want to build a new house on those lots. And some of those lots are smaller than mine. You know, this mm -hmm. is just, it is so up to the builder fairness. to get a permit. Yeah. And to get a permit, it's up to go to DeKalb County and say, you know, hey, we're going to meet your requirements. And so Can that's... You say a, no variances? Oh, that's fine. I mean, it, it couldn't come back with a, you know, saying, oh, I, in order to make my septic work, I've got to do mm. uh, a... Can go into you can say septic. no variances for septic... To, to try to provide for a septic tank system, I'd be fine with that. Is that, is that okay? Sorry, I was considering the other suggestion of conditioning with no variances for a second. If you could... And that's if, right. if we said no conditions to provide for a septic system. Uh, that's a possibility. That seemed vague. That <laughs> seemed very I'll vague. Be, I'll be honest with you. If that... Technically, the way it's written in number five, that would be sort of staff's preference if you wanted to move right. with the flexibility. The reason being, just like Bennett uh, stated, we will have to confirm the full approval of Mr. Horder from DeKalb County for the septic tank installation before we uh, even allow him to move forward with <laughs> approval of a building permit on our end. Um, so essentially, the way we staff use it, it provides for that flexibility based upon the condition as written in number five. Mm -hmm. what, what is the ghost lot? Is that the one next to the 100-foot lot? No, there is... In between us and Regency Park is a vacated road, and I'm not sure. It's like gray something road. Um, we've got a we've got a copy of that survey plan here on our packet. Um, if that road wasn't there, I would still need two easements from the neighbors yeah. to get to the manhole, but presumably because I could bore and not disturb anything above ground, they might be nice enough to grant me those easements, but that old road closed, not knowing who owns it. I don't know how to get an easement, and I kind of, you know. Doesn't this, wouldn't the city have some kind of easement on a road? That's well, if it's a public road, we have, it's a right-of-way, which is owned it's by a right of way, the city. Even if it's on private property, wouldn't the city have if it's a public access? right away, if it if it's been abandoned, then you know it's no, no you longer don't. ours. You we know it's been abandoned. It was a thought. <laughs> uh, no, and, and yeah. honestly, we, we had looked into who owned it because then I could have been if I could have gotten six more inches, I'd be at R seventy five, and that would right. have sounded better, and, and all the rest. And that was that was our intention was to was to even contemplate finding out who owned it to buy it just to make everything be better, but, uh, and Julie can speak to this, we yeah. were just unable to determine, you know, who, who, who the owner was, and then the neighbor in Regency Park felt like that was her buffer, so she didn't want me to own the lot, you know, and I was, I was like, well, that's fine then. Marie, how do we answer that question? Well, um, we need to just check the records to see if it was abandoned by the county, uh, you know, to the adjoining property owner. So we need to find out. I mean, we have to we have to research to see first and foremost mm -hmm. if it was abandoned, or is it just an old roadbed there that's just been neglected and 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 left alone. Um, but <clears throat> we'll have to look at that. I see Richard's already looking at his his laptop Sorry. and trying to figure it out. Um, you know, it shows old. It says old road closed. Mm -hmm. Closed meaning that it was no longer open to the public. Closed meaning it was abandoned. Uh, that's just something we're going to have to check with with the county. We don't show it as an asset. Um, it, looking on the tax maps, the parcel maps, it does not show up on the parcel on the tax maps as an abandoned road. It shows up as part of that lot and Regency Walk. But we would have to pull the plat for right. Regency Walk to 
figure that whether it was abandoned or not because the tax maps are not always the final say so. Right. I kind of have it's a, I, I kind of have a feeling that the survey would have picked up if it was part yeah. of the Regency Walk because that's a newer. Yeah. I and think it would have been listed by the surveyor as part of Regency Walk if it was. And we did pull the Email. plat, for but that, but it's it shown on, on this survey. It's noted as, you know, closed old road. So mm -hmm. we we really need to understand. We need to check. I, I, I think we're close here. Um, I think we're just trying to figure out uh, just a good way to sort of write this other condition. D do, you, do we like the condition about just each, <coughs> each lot shall connect to public sewer, period? No, I think he needs to have the option A little on more that. flexibility than that. Yeah. Well, maybe it's just I don't like the way this, this condition, and Ben, help me here. It says if approval cannot be obtained, you know, so, so the public sewer in this language is sort of the second option. How do we flip that sentence to make it the first option? So each lot shall be connected to public sewer, period. Um, if that is not feasible. As a first option. You know, if that is not feasible as a first option. Start, start with as a first option. Then, um, subjective. Then, uh, then approval should be. Objective. Somewhat ambiguous if we yeah. could use yeah, like feasible. Know what feasible means. Yeah. You want to put a price tag on it? I mean, you were kind of saying, I mean, really, practically, we're talking about a, a, I mean, uh, if it's be, over $50,000 or something. I don't know if that's do that, legal. Then, then, of course, you're relying on my numbers and everything yeah. like that. So, um, but I'm, I'm happy to, you know. You, you didn't know to come in with lower numbers. You should. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I know what I want to do, you, you know, so that part makes yeah. it easy for me is, is I don't have any, I don't have any reason to, to, to do that, but. You know, I'm, you know, that would be the one thing is, is, is someone tell me what feasibility means, <laughs> you, you know. I know your lawyer doesn't want you to uh, yeah. defer this, but is it, worth, the, is it, is it worth considering, especially in light of the fact that you may be getting city assistance and trying to find out what's going on with that road? Mm -hmm. You may be able to go to your 75 feet. You may be able to get your bore permit to go ahead and do what you want to do. I, I'll say this <laughs> in particular. I, I would not under any circumstances at this point want to buy the road for two reasons. Number one, the lady in Regency Park likes it the way that it is. <laughs> and number two, that changes my site plan, which I think starts me back at zero, you know, because now my the site plan that I've given y'all to okay. decide would change. Good. But as far as finding out who owns it to see if they will give me an easement to bore under it, I I really, you know, I'm be be blunt here I, I don't I don't want a deferral but but if it, I found out if that was an option if somebody told me that the city owned it and they were ready to sign an easement and then I could go to the other two people and they would sign an easement I don't know whether they would but like I said the idea that you could bore mm -hmm. and be underneath the road and you know you make it worth their while that would certainly right. be nice landscaping like to go home tonight that would be a nice way to <laughs> end up with everybody feeling well, we wouldn't be able to give you that answer tonight yeah. but obviously right and one of the things that Tim and I were just talking about is you know if if that roadbed was indeed abandoned right it could have been abandoned down the middle and both properties share it so you know and that's that's a typical practice I mean this can be found out yeah yeah Right. I mean, right. if both properties owned it, then obviously it's me and the lady that I already needed. I, I, I think it's, I think it's to your advantage to hold off for just a little bit and, and really get this down so we can do a clear vote on this. Well, if you play that out, and the scenario plays out that, that they can get an easement, then he definitely would be doing sewer. Sure. I mean, you've got a much lower cost probably in doing it. It's so then your problem goes better. away. It's only the issue of, well, you go down that path, you find out we don't have any kind of easement, and then we're no different than where we are today. All right. Is anybody concerned about the precedence issue? Because we, there was a lot in my neighborhood that was 170 feet wide that was trying to be zoned, split into two and zoned into R75, and the council voted it down because of precedence. I wanted to mention that for the record. <clears throat> Was that other site map? The fact that it's uh, adjacent to is that R R fifty R fifty on one side and R one hundred on the other one R one hundred and then across the street is R A eight R A eight R one hundred directly across the street to the right it's R A eight. 
but <coughs> if, if I could speak to that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just something that happened. Yeah, no, 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 I, and I understand it. I, yeah. You know, once again, the, the, the reason why when we went to contract, we thought this made sense, and, and we started this in March with going through some hoops, so we've been at this for a little bit, is, you know, number one, we once again, we are going to meet all of the R100 requirements, except for the road frontage. And there's several other R100 lots in the neighborhood that don't have 100 feet of frontage. So I actually feel like we're, we're staying with the character. I know that doesn't necessarily, you know, answer the precedent question, although the precedent question resides with you guys to, to vote yes or no on Fine. the next guy that walks in the door. So, um, but, you know, there is no other lots that I know of in this neighborhood. First off, it's the largest lot in the neighborhood. And outside of the guy across the street, the only one that's bounded by a different zoning. <laughs> so, I mean, it's really a unique piece in my mind, you know, in my mind. Now that this one had R50, <coughs> R50 across the street, R75 down the street. In other words, it was similar, some similar situation. Just wanted to make sure we knew that. All right, any more questions? All right. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Council. I guess at this time I'm debating the deferral. Yeah. Of the well, I mean, you have to kind of take a. <laughs> right in, now, you're, you're, I don't. Kind of you, want to know what, uh, you want to know what the sense is. And, and, yeah, yeah, and I just, uh, I wanted to clarify. I, you know, I'm obviously here as Andy's representative. The the hesitation that I had for the deferral was one, just to have a more concrete idea. Number two, on behalf of my client, he had already gone down the path several several months ago, based on representations that he did not need a rezoning. He just needed a variance. So went through the whole variance process only to get to the end game and say, well, no, we can't do this at a variance. So while this particular matter hasn't been deferred, he spent a lot yeah, of, yeah, yeah. exactly, he spent a lot of time. So mm -hmm. I just, that's obviously his call. I don't have a dog in that fight on his behalf. I, you know, I. Yeah, talk, more time costs. Well, well you know, I can't, I can't speak for council because we haven't voted. Sure. Um, you can take your sense for maybe where we are, but I'm going to recommend you take a deferral, get a definite answer on what you want to do septic or sewer-wise, and come back to us, present it to us, and let us vote. That's my recommendation. 30, 30 days? Or so. what, what would be the deferral time? Well, our next, our next meeting weeks, is next and Tuesday, then and then we have another meeting on November the 18th or December the 2nd. I don't know if we can get it done that quickly. Right. At least, you know. Well, and then there are the we'll, we'll November 18th and then December 16th will be the uh, second option. Oh, we're off Thanksgiving. Yeah. So we're talking about six weeks. Or, or, or you're talking about November 18th. We're November Correct, 18th. November 18th. That's two weeks to, two and a half weeks to figure out that question. I, 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 I think it's poss possible to figure out a idea of whether the septic will be approved in two weeks. That's but even that, they're not going to give me a permit. They're going to give me, so they're no, going to give yeah, that, me, nobody the expecting best a permit. I could hope for is an mm -hmm. email. You know, no, a lot of people don't want to put their names on anything. I was actually impressed when they gave me the letter because it's hard to get anyone to sign something saying we agree to this. But I think oh, I can I do that, and way. I think I can do more work on the sewer, but I don't know that I can get. No, I mean, uh, saying, I would say, you know, this is a, for a, 3,500 square foot house and this many bathrooms. Yeah. Does the 25.5 is that still apply? Sure. That that's kind of the question I would think you would need. I have a letter, but it doesn't specify the size, the size. house. You know, right. and I guess my answer to that would be if they said no. And yeah. I could if you can come back more specifically house, to us with that kind of information, then it would be factual. Could, We'd be could we also it. do a little work on this uh, abandoned road thing? Well, too? yeah, I think that, that should that be part of this for sure. Yeah. So we've got two weeks to maybe try to find some more answers. Y'all need a few minutes? Agent happens to be here in this yeah, cellar. Right, I'm yeah. doing a lot of stuff when I don't own about, the property. Can we move right to the next right. item and bring so. them back? Can we suspend this one? And, and Mary Council, one so thing, if going? I may add. Hmm? I apologize. If I may add. After two weeks, in all honesty here, just based upon what I'm hearing from the applicant, we may come down to the same path of discussion that we've sort of had tonight, ultimately. Um, I understand, you know, not to, not to sway a decision one way or the other, but really take into consideration what the outcome would be if you were to defer for an additional two weeks. First off, is that enough time? Second, would Mr. Hoarder have the plans in place to determine what he actually wants to build on the property to determine how large of a septic tank he may require? Um, 
you know, I think we may end up in the same place. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So we do have condition five. I just want to put it out there. The other alternative that was discussed also as well was a modification, maybe a little bit more specific on your end as to how you want to move forward. Yeah, I, I actually <laughs> would contend that if you play out those scenarios, you know, if the issue with council is that we don't want septic, then I don't think that that's would, the issue. That would be a condition that just doesn't require septic. If no. the issue, the condition is that we um, only want septic if the county is going to allow it, well, I think that the current condition actually addresses that. So I think it's important for us to decide what, what is the ultimate outcome that we hope to achieve by this two weeks. I mean, he needs to know for certainty, but but from a um, approval standpoint, the I, I contend, I, I think most of the conditions are in here. Yeah. Right. I think for me, if we could, I don't know if you can put this in a condition, because I, but you've already said it. If we could say, the, you know, the first, um, the first goal is to hook up to sewer. Mm -hmm. The second goal uh, would be to, to use septic. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. you can yes, take out the word feasible or cost or whatever. Um, and then maybe we, we add what we were talking about, you know, and no variance is allowed uh, in the event that septic is, you know, uh, yeah. determined. No, no variance is on the septic tank insulation. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Can you know, if you that? said no, no, no variance will be allowed due to septic tank, I'm, I have no problem with that. I, I, can I just make one That's, point for the record? I know we've, we've, you all have talked about this a long time, and I'm not trying to make a statement to add to the discussion, but I just want to be sure, just for the record, to make it clear. When it comes to septic tank approval, this elected body has no governing right. authority. Right. Yeah, that is authority. strictly a health department matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if that's going to be determined on whether or not the property perks, how large the house is, where the, um, the field lines are going to be, where the tank's going to be, how large that tank is going to be, all of that goes into, you know, the equation as to whether or not the health department is going to permit that. And, and if, if the answer is no, it's sewer or you don't build, period. And, and or you have to reduce the number of houses. Not rezoned. And, correct. So, I mean, and that's... That, the rezoning reverts back to R100. I mean... But the conditions would mean that the property would have to comply with either the sewer or the septic. And if it does not... And if it does not, I mean, that it's still rezoned, but it's conditional on those things being achieved before anything could happen. Would it be correct? I mean, before anything could happen, it would have to meet those conditions. Bill. Right. I think what you've been struggling with is, do you rezone it absent the knowledge of what's it going to take to accommodate the two houses he wants to put on there? Right. And, and he, he has yet to say, because he's not been able to give that to the health department, the specificity that they need to make a determination. That, that I haven't heard him say that. And I, and I think well, also I to follow up, his, his desire is to tie into the sewer. I mean, correct. That's, you know, and that's the other point. That's, 30 you know. minutes ago, he said his preference is to tie into sewer. So perhaps what Mr. Song said earlier was maybe the condition should just be you're tying into sewer. And just one other point of, in terms of perspectives from uh, an adjacent jurisdiction of ours, um, Fulton County, let's say, they require you to tie into public sewer, right, period. Right. The only time that you have the option to apply for, maybe even consider a septic tank, um, is if you have no fees or possibility of connecting onto public sewer, period. Uh, in addition to that, I mean, they have a little bit more stringent requirements in terms of lot sizes. Typically, I believe it's an acre. Uh, you know, you have to account for, again, what Ben has stated, the proper uh, drainage field and so forth. But generally speaking, they require you to go on public sewer. And only when and if when, if you cannot, then, that, then the septic becomes a possibility or an alternative. I don't know if that, you know, that's just one perspective. I, I, got a, I got another question, and I, I really think that this may muddle things even more. But, and, I, and I don't. We're mean, talking septic tanks. I, I, don't, I, don't so. I don't mean to do that, but I guess the it, it, the one thing that I would want to protect beyond anything is hypothetically, you put in 
the, whichever condition we do, and it does not work. What, what, is the, what is the possibility of going back to R100 and going back to the way it was? Or does that just not? If it's just a matter of going through the process, then at least I can go to my seller and say, I'll put in an amendment saying I will give you X thousands of dollars to go back through the process to, re, you know, to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm concerned with what I'm doing to my seller tying things up, getting a rezoning that can't go back to the way that it was. It won't be split because the house won't be torn down until I figure all this out, but the rezoning will be there, and, I, and I'd like to be able to have a functionality of re, reversion, and I don't know if that's legally possible. He'll have to go back through the process. I mean, if you all rezone this property and he wishes to have it revert. But do, do people ever do that? I mean, is that, I mean, it seems like, yeah. boy, the, the neighbor, you know, the neighbors that don't like me now would love me then, I'm sure. So, I mean, is that, you know, if that's a relatively easy process, then at least me and the seller can work something out and say, hey, I've got to do all this stuff. She'll be, you know, happy that I'm moving forward. And in the end, if I can't get it done, then it's, you're back where you started from. I don't, you know. Yeah. I mean, I do Could think that we've certainly right. done rezonings Could where the condition. development has not moved forward and the yeah. applicants yeah. come and back then, with a different All right, we got a, we got a, um, Fish or cut bait, so we're gonna fish. All right, so uh, I'm inclined to to change the, the condition five to each lot shall connect public sewer. Period. What, what what is the recourse if in fact he finds that that's? We'd have to come back for a rezoning and changing conditions because it'd be a part. I mean. I'm not speaking on the city attorney's behalf, but it's, yeah. you know, it, it, looking at it in the context of this is a rezoning. And I think if you conditioned it with the no variance for septic and indicate that, you know, the owner, you know, shall first, uh, you know, shall, shall attempt sewer connection and make it specific that no uh, variance would be available for septic, I mean, I think that that addresses the concern of having somebody come back and ask for more special exceptions. But, you know, if you rezone a property with that specific, we're not in, you know, Fulton County that has the mechanism in place that you just come in and show your documents that this is why it didn't work. And so you get, you know, that, that, that's, their, that's their rule. It's not part of a zoning. So, um, it, it certainly has a more far-reaching impact if a zoning is conditioned upon um, public sewer period. And so what could be the language uh, can you recommend that, that says the first priority shall be to seek sewer? And if that doesn't, and if that is not uh, possible or feasible or doesn't work, obtainable, um, then, then he should apply for septic, and then we add another variance that says another condition that says no variances for septic. I would but like to get legal. I would like to get legal's perspective on in terms of con placing in conditions that says that the applicant not cannot seek a variance. I think that's a little too restrict restrictive, mm -hmm. and that we do have that remedy available yeah. through our zoning ordinance. Well, I. I yeah, go ahead. I would hesitate against that condition, uh, saying uh, tying their hands actually, and so they can't come to you with a variance. We don't know what the variance might be in the future, so um, I, I would hesitate against that, um, I, and I hesitate to venture into this. But what I'm hearing is, I don't think I, I think I hear preferences. Obviously, number one would be that this property or the structures being built on this property connect to the sewer. That's your first preference. However, I'm not hearing that you're totally opposed to a sewer system as long as it's, of course, septic. approved. Septic. Sept, uh, septic system, as long as it's approved, it is approved by the DeKalb County. Is that? Which it would have to be. It would have to be. It would have to be. So I think, yeah. and maybe this is obviously your call, but I think the condition that Ben has in there would take care of that. Now, if if you're uncertain still, I would think, and we are treading in water we don't really have any jurisdiction on, you know, with respect to the, the septic system, we may want to defer it. Uh, uh, for at least, I would give it plenty of time, though, actually. 
That was my original recommendation. One, one additional thing, I mean, there was discussions, again, of reverting back to the original zoning. Uh, the other sort of discussion of coming in for a changing conditions. Even if you were to provide a specific condition like you just mentioned, uh, in terms of sort of each lot shall be connected to public sewer period, um, there are avenues for them to seek a change, which is again, you know, that I don't necessarily like the idea of sort of uh, rezoning something and possibly at a later time coming back for to revert back to the original. Um, but even if you were to move forward with each lot connecting to public sewer as a condition, the applicant does have the ability if they find that it's not possible at a later date to come in for a change in condition. And at that time, he may have more information that he could share with the council to possibly argue for or justify a septic tank. Uh, I think the other thing, too, that you have to include in, in your deliberation on this is are you comfortable with the property being split into two lots? That's all part of the rezoning that has created the issue of if it's sewer or septic. and. We've we've chased this dog's tail for quite some time. I mean, I'd I'd like to see us come to some kind of motion on it. So, Mr. Horn, I'm going to ask you to defer and come back with a definitive answer in December. Give you plenty of time to look this over. Okay. December 16. Um, let me ask you this: If I, once again, the, the, uh, I think the gentleman over there brought up preferences. If I figure out one but not the other, and I got to go on one, is that good? Or is it got to be the right one? <laughs> Do you mean the lots or the option for sewer or septic? Option for sewer or septic. Yeah. Oh, it's your call, isn't it? No. Well, I, I, <laughs> it's I, my I, call. I'd be walking I, out of here with the yeah. septic. I'd go figure it out. Yeah. I, and I guess I'd either yeah. redesign my house to be smaller so I could get septic, so I don't own. Yeah, a but you're saying you you would do septic unless it got to a certain cost, and then it would be price prohibitive. Uh, 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 so you need to find out what what you're looking at, and you need to know if you can get septic that would work with the house that you want to build. Sure. And sure. come back and tell us. But but if I can't, I mean, is is I guess that's my question to you. Is the feeling at this point? I know nobody wants to give definitives. Is the feeling at this point? that if you can find a viable way to service wastewater, that the board is inclined to vote for the rezoning and the lot split. Yeah, I think that's a that's fair really, question with, so, with yeah. what I got to go said. through. Can you yeah. live with two lots? Well, I, I can tell you, my, my personal that? preference is that we move forward with the conditions that staff recommend that went through planning commission. I mean, I think that at the end of the day, the outcome is if we're, comf if we're comfortable with it being connected to sewer, and we're also comfortable with it being con you know, connected to septic if it meets the DeKalb kind of conditions, mm -hmm. then, the, then we should approve based on the current conditions that have been okay. presented in this plan. And I so think that, is, I'm inclined to agree. <laughs> and, and I think that at the end of the day, the, I, I would like to see the ability for, um, I'd like our legal to reconsider if the applicant is willing to um, have a prohibition on variances on the on the uh, septic tank I mean that to me seems like it's it's an applicant's giving up of that or we well, we'll certainly look into that uh, just at this moment I wouldn't suggest going I mean I think that. that that addresses some of the concerns we heard from some of the neighbors about the tree the, the tree preservation and the tree mm -hmm. canopy so. summarize it so I'll, I'll make a motion that we go ahead I've got to pull this up here uh, power save mode. So um, I move that we approve Ordinance 2014-05, sorry, Ordinance 2014-10-05, RC 14 dash, no, that's the wrong number. I'm sorry. Um, I move that we approve Ordinance 2014-10-04, RZ 14-15, Peace Street Park Partners, Rezoning request from R100 to R60 to subdivide one lot in two lots as conditioned by staff um, reports with the additional um, condition that the applicant has a prohibition on the variances for the septic tank. After that. Hmm. I thought they recommended against that. Well, I would say subject to legal review. I mean, 
don't think you can do that. You can't, can't do, do that. that. Uh-uh. No. I wish but, you could. But you were willing to accept that condition. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'm going to second it. I mean, my only, the only, All in favor. I can't imagine right. any um, variance. Oh, well. this, any discussion? Uh, what's the, could you restate the motion? I, I yeah. didn't. Restate the motion, base. Sure. You got all the first part, the, the rezoning and the ordinance number and all that. It's, it's um, approval of the rezoning uh, request from R100 to R60 um, with the staff conditions as stated in the, in the packet and an additional condition to uh, a prohibition on variances on the uh, septic tank installation. Acquiring a septic tank permit. If, if I could just chime in unsolicited. Yeah. Our concern with that is that we just keep in mind that when you put that condition on this property, it's going to apply to the actual purchaser of the property and, and all subsequent purchasers. So you're now saying that they cannot ever apply for a variance without coming in and going through this rezoning process mm -hmm. to get that condition removed. And so it's just something to keep in mind. It's not just the developer that's going to be bound by this. It's it's all future property owners as well. Variance is on a very specific area. See, this is and the reason that we have variances to begin with is to avoid taking claims. Right. So I, I would say to the audience out there, this is a great example of concurrent yes. variances where we're dealing with the we're trying to <laughs> impact the ZBA, and we, we are legally being told it's really not. So I will amend my motion to. Um, take off that last amendment. So it's just uh, subject to the staff conditions. You know, second on the amendment, because there was a second made to the original motion. Okay, I'll second the amendment. Any discussion? More discussion? Um, I'm about disgusted. I, all in favor <laughs> of adopting the motion, the state signal by some saying aye. 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 All opposed? I'll work with you. I'll let you. We need, to, we need the actual go motion. Go forth and do good work. Oh, now we need the motion. <laughs> that was the motion, wasn't it? No, that was the amended, the, 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 um, to amend my original motion. Now we have to. Yeah, he, he took the second vote. Okay. Oh, is there another motion? Or no, it's just no, no, it's already on the Vote on the amendment. So we don't we have to. You already voted on the amendment. Voting on the original yeah, motion, yeah. So now you vote on the, the motion. All right, so. All in favor of the original motion signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No, it's not nah. the original. It's yeah. the amended motion. The amended motion. Okay. Strike Which that one. Which removed the prohibition of seeking a variance. Keystone cop up here. <laughs> Another fine mess you got me into. All in favor of the motion that's supposed to be voted on right now signify so by saying aye. <laughs> aye. aye. All opposed? All right. Thank you. Thank you all. One other thing, and as I mentioned, I'll, I'll, I'll be in touch with you as we figure it out. But if we can get some assistance from the city regarding that just the road, yeah. the vacated road, um, Julie, I'll let, that. you know, I'll authorize Julie to continue to yeah, investigate we, that. That may solve this thing. Yeah. Really Mr. Holder, quickly. Richard, meet me. This is your contact point. Thank you. Next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Public hearing RZ 1414. Okay. That's all for the public hearing items. No, we've got them with, with the number four. Oh, number four. Excuse me. I beg your pardon. Uh, that was that is RZ 14-14, which has requested uh, a withdrawal without prejudice. Okay. Is there a a motion? Or public hearing. Or public hearing on op open the public hearing on. RZ 14 14. Any? I have none. No. Okay. No to present either. All right. Close the public hearing. Is there a motion? I move that we allow the applicant to withdraw the application for ordinance 2014 10 05. There's RZ 14 14. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? All in favor of the withdrawal signify so by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Um. Okay, that moves us now to old business. We have none. New business. Uh, yes, new business. Uh, we have the amended uh, agenda with the new number one, which is the mutual non-disclosure agreement uh, between the city of Brookhaven, Georgia, and Trop Inc. and JEG Family Trust, collectively Pink Pony. Uh, this is for the council's ratification. Hey, is there a motion? Uh, do we have a copy of this? Can you, do we see it? 
thought should. we had some papers up here. You sure? Yeah, I placed it on your computers before the council meeting. If I have an extra copy, if you. So I move that we uh, adopt the mutual non-disclosure agreement um, between the City of Brookhaven and Trop Inc. For a second. I second. In discussion. Yeah, I would like to add a little discussion. the The purpose of this is to allow these two parties to communicate. Uh, we have spent a considerable amount of money, of the taxpayers' money, on the legal uh, defense against the Pink Pony. And we have a responsibility to communicate with this party to see if we can find a reasonable resolution. Um, we've seen in other cities where even after Supreme Court rulings, litigation has continued um, for years. And so it is important, and I think um, uh, it, it is prudent for us to have uh, open dialogues, or not an open dialogues, but a non-disclosure dialogue um, with these parties to see if we can find a good resolution of this problem. I would just I would say like to say that um, I um, agree that I've said from the beginning of this issue that um, I'll never be closed minded to listen to someone uh, who has reached out or wants to talk about any issue, whether I agree or disagree with what the issue is. Um, I think it is um, important and it always has been uh, to me, and I've been consistent about this, that in regards to the issue with the litigation on our sexual warning business ordinance, I've said from the beginning that if we can have a solution whereby the existing business is allowed to stay under certain conditions for a certain period of time, while at the same time keeping other new businesses out, stopping proliferation of um, strip clubs along Beaufort Highway or anywhere else in our city, I think that's a, a something we ought to pursue. So my uh, motivation on this from the beginning has been to have an ordinance that does that, that keeps out um, new strip clubs or new businesses of that nature while having an ordinance that prohibits that business model from proliferating in our city. And if we can do that, I think that we've uh, achieved what our goal was from the beginning, and that is not just um, uh, stopping proliferation, but dealing with negative secondary effects or possible negative, negative secondary effects from that type of business. So, um, uh, you know, there were some strong words and some emails that went out about the city accepting bribes, which I think is irresponsible and um, beneath the level of professionalism that I expect on this council. And um, I just want the people to know that talking to parties involved in litigation or in any dispute has always been my modus operandi as mayor of the city. That I've always encouraged people to talk their disputes out and to speak with one another to see if solutions can be found. And I'll, ne I'll never apologize for that. And um, I don't compromise my principles and I don't, um, I don't think talking to parties who you, you've been in dispute or might be in dispute with in the future is anything other than good policy. So um, part of that, the reason this is on the agenda is to be able to talk and see if there can be some kind of agreement reached. Um, and to, in order to do that, like well, the reason we have executive sessions is to be able to speak freely in confidence uh, so that we can achieve a desired results. And this is similar to what this is about, is a non-disclosure so that parties can speak without fear of repercussion or leaks or, or um, partial information getting out uh, that is not fair or prejudices either party. So that's the reason for having uh, discussions that will then be, if they're fruitful, be brought open to the public, approved or disapproved for the public's benefit and in full public view. And I think that's what this uh, non-disclosure agreement is all about, is being able to discuss frankly without fear of um, partial information getting leaked out that might lead to false impressions that don't exist. So that's why I think it's important that we have non-disclosure agreements. I'm simply going to stand by my remarks that I made uh, earlier. I make no apologies and uh, don't take anything back. I'm, I'm, uh, I, think, I think I've stated pretty clearly that I think this is a bad deal for the city. I don't think we should be making deals. I don't think we have any reason to be talking to a party that we have, you know, we have won, we have won the war in court. They, the Supreme Court decided that 
we were correct on all 15 counts. And so why we are negotiating, I don't understand. We have no need to. Uh, no deal should be struck. We really should just be asking them to comply with the ordinance. Um, if, if we wanted to strike a deal, we could have done this, you know, 18 months ago. Uh, if you want to, if you want to change the ordinance, then fine, bring it on. But you know, let's let's not make exceptions and uh, give some some businesses uh, the chance to buy their way out of or, or making some kind of a settlement agreement in order to not follow our laws. I think it's bad business. I think it's bad for the city. I'm sorry it's come to this. Um, and I'm, you know, I don't like this confidentiality agreement because once again, it's, you know, it's just deals being made behind closed doors. And I, th I thought we had promised uh, more transparency than that. Yeah, I just, I'd like to say that executive sessions are confidential and we ha there, there's a necessity for having confidentiality at certain points as long as you're going to disclose what your result is. And I think that's, that's um, a good policy. Joe, did you have any comments? You know, what's lost in the equation here is um, at, the in, at the inception of this, it never was about the pink pony. It was about the city of Brookhaven establishing a constitutional, amend, uh, constitutional law, an ordinance that would hold up in the court. And it was a precedent setting case that we got a unanimous vote from the uh, Supreme Court through um, various levels. Um, I'm not opposed to having a conversation with a business now that we have this to find out if there are grounds uh, for uh, the, maintaining the integrity of our ordinance. It's a conversation. That to me is something that always should happen. I just want to say that I hope that uh, when and if uh, this deal is struck that we certainly make it uh, public and we delineate all the, the parts of it and uh, discuss uh, whether it's a sum of money or a condition or if it's for a time period of uh, several months or several years, I think people should really understand if, in fact, we're working towards having this uh, strip club actually come into compliance or whether they're just buying time. So mm -hmm. I look forward to seeing that and a public hearing on it, and I hope uh, we get a chance to really air that out in public. I think that's a good point, Rebecca. I mean, really, the, you, you just hit the nail on the head because – Without this agreement, we can't have those discussions. And we, you know, if there is an opportunity to, to end litigation, then we can't move forward to do that unless we move forward with this motion and this non-disclosure. So there, there, uh, there is no deal. You know, this is hopefully the, the dialogue can be communicated. And, you know, I contend that there are plenty of taxpayers out there who, who have great concerns about the, uh, about the path that the city of Brookhaven has gone down to this point. I'd like to say also we've been muzzled long enough. You know, this is just another, another, another period of being muzzled. You know, we, we were told from the beginning of this lit, lit, uh, litigation that we couldn't speak about it, we couldn't talk about it, we couldn't let residents really know what we were thinking on every issue because when you're involved in litigation, things that you say can end up hurting you. So this is just another, um, it's just a continuation of that. And, and I look forward to the time when we can be muzzle-free completely about this issue and our reasons for doing what we've done and what we will do in the future. So believe me, it's been frustrating to us as a council not to be able to speak our minds about this issue, and we're going to have to do it for a little bit longer. Um, uh, and and I, I'm looking forward to when we can speak candidly and freely about every aspect of this in a public forum and neighborhoods and, 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 and town halls in the future. So. Um, I share, I know we're all frustrated and have been frustrated for a year and a half on this issue. And I look forward to that frustration ending at some point. Um, all right. Regardless of what your opinion is about this particular business, they are a business that exists in Brookhaven as we speak. And I think they're due the courtesy and the respect of at least having a conversation. All right. Is there, um, all in favor of the motion? Did you make a motion? Yeah, you did. Yeah. All in favor of the motion for the non disclosure. Signify so by saying aye. Was it seconded? I did. I seconded it. Yeah. Aye. 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 Um, opposed? Nay. All right. Uh, the motion carries. Next. Next item is 
Ordinance 2014-10-01, consideration and approval of an ordinance to amend Chapter 14, Land Development of the Code of the City of Brookhaven, Georgia, to revise the applicability of regulations to stream buffers and for other purposes. Uh, we discussed this at uh, our earlier um, work session, and we discussed it two weeks ago at our last um, work session as well. Uh, you have the ordinance before you with the changes. Um, Mr. White is here to answer any questions that you all may have. And uh, this is a, uh, not a public hearing item, but it is open for public comment. Um, in 30 seconds, what does this do? All right. <laughs> this amendment removes the provision in the current city stream buffer ordinance that does not allow the Zoning yeah. Board of Appeals to grant a variance for work within the inner 35 feet of the 75-foot buffer unless the Georgia EPD has also granted a variance for work within the 25-foot state stream buffer. This eliminates that and gives the Zoning Board of Appeals the ability to issue a variance uh, within the inner 35 feet regardless of I mean, they're not beholden to state action. And let me be clear on this. The, this was in order to kind of correct sort of a defect in our, and this is the last item for the evening, folks. Uh, whereby the way our ordinance was written, was written was creating a dead space between 35 and 25 feet that people could not seek any relief, whether it was six inches or not, and people would be encouraged or would go around that dead zone to get to the state to try to get a variance from the state um, in order to get what they wanted. Is that correct? Conceivably, yes. That is, in that 10-foot area, mm -hmm. um, the city could only issue a variance in the city portion of the buffer if the state had also issued a variance within the state portion of the buffer. So it requires people to go to the 25-foot variance for the state in order to get into the 35-foot. Correct. Correct. I move. Unintended consequence. We're correcting. All right. I move that we approve ordinance 2014-10-01. Public, public, public comment, comment. Public on, mm -hmm. on this ordinance. Is there any public comment before Bates does his motion? Anybody have any? No, okay, all right. I move that Public we comments close. <laughs> I move that we approve ordinance 2014-10-01 consideration and approval of ordinance to amend chapter 14 land development of the code of the city of Brookhaven, Georgia to revise the applicability of regulations to stream buffers and for other purposes. I Let's second. See. Any discussion? All in favor of adopting the ordinance signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, last item. Last item is Ordinance 2014-10-02, consideration and approval of ordinance for the amendment and adoption of Chapter 14, Article 3, Subdivisions, Division 1 and 2. Um, Mr. <coughs> Song. Oops. Oh, Bennett, excuse me. I did that in the <laughs> work session. Uh, Mr. Bennett has a... Mr. White has... <laughs> we, know, we know who we're talking about. Mr. White, excuse me. Well, forgive me. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this ordinance is on the agenda as part of the requirement for the city to adopt its own ordinances, and it deals with subdivisions and the plat approval process associated with subdividing. Compared to the DeKalb County ordinance that speaks to the same issues, the most significant difference of this ordinance versus DeKalb's involves the plat approval procedure. Uh, DeKalb's ordinance requires a planning commission approval on a what's called a sketch plat before it would become a preliminary plat. Um, if an applicant is proposing a preliminary plan, and in, in what this ordinance does in Brookhaven compared to that is if an applicant is proposing a preliminary plat that conforms without obtaining a rezoning or a variance, the ordinance uh, requires posting of a sign that shall serve as notice of preliminary plat approval rather than having to go to the Planning Commission for approval. Said sign must be posted for at least 10 days before issuance of a land disturbance permit associated with the proposal. The sign posting is not required if a site plan for the preliminary plat was approved as a condition during a public hearing for a variance or a rezoning. Uh, this process uh, recognizes a use by right, whereby if the staff receives a proposal that complies with applicable ordinances and codes, we're obligated to approve that application. All right. Do you have any comment about it, Marie? No. And I'll move that we. Um, Any public comment? Uh, well, we. She, she <laughs> just said no. Public comment on this. I have none. All right. Mm -hmm. no, no public comment. Then I'll move that we uh, we pass ordinance two two zero one four dash one zero dash zero two consideration approval of ordinance for the amendment and adoption of chapter fourteen article three subdivisions division one and two. 
I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor of adopting the ordinance signifies so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Other business? We have none. All right. Public comments? Is there any public comments on anything? Dale Boone. Dale Boone. And I'm sorry, and there's a Mary lady Storm. behind Dale. Mary Storm. Okay. Oh, Mary Storm. Mayor, City Council, how are we doing this evening? All right. I can't believe we spent more time on septic tanks than we did sex clubs. I'm confused. Where are we going? I mean, first we push for Buford Highway to be redeveloped. Now we're pushing for Buford Highway to stay the same. As it's little be known, less than a mile and a half from this sex club, there is a school. It's called Cross Keys. It's also called Woodward Elementary. Now these poor children who have to catch the bus on Buford Highway, less than a mile from a school, are seeing what the pink pony is. So I guess our next step is to pass an ordinance that would ban sex shops and sex clubs in a vicinity of a school district or a school. Just like how we have drug-free zones, we should have sex-oriented shops free zones. That is your next step. That relies you from anything that you done undisclosed. And if this is not pushed, then I'm not understanding the protection of our children. I've already been in contact with the neighborhoods Hillsdale, Lenox Park, Cross Keys, Shady Valley, Oakwood. They all requested for y'all to vote no tonight, but you voted yes. You're going to have to attend to those. You're going to have to attend to a lot of the meetings in these neighborhood associations to explain what has happened tonight. You can enjoy the short money, or you can enjoy the short time, I don't know. Now, I was just looking at a paper, which is a paper, I believe, is called the Brookhaven Police, broader here, right here in the Brookhaven Reporter. As anybody can see, all the blue plots that I have marked off, Buford Highway, strong arm robbery, Buford Highway, robbery with a gun, Buford Highway, carjacking. Hey, Dale, can you, hold, can you lower your tone a little bit? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I appreciate it. So you have all this Buford Highway, Curtis Drive, I'm, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, Curtis Drive is where the Pink Pony is located. Simple battery. All this stuff is going on. But yet, because of money, that you want this to continue going on. Now I'm going to have to step back and reassess myself and my investment in my home. I don't know if Brookhaven is a good place to, to stay if I'm not going to get support. Next. Mary Storm. My name is Mary Storm. I live on Bubbling Creek Road and have for almost 40 years. Um, I don't know what this has to do that, that with the ordinance that just passed in relation to the uh, stream buffers, but I received a letter. Um, it was mailed on October 23rd. I received it on the 24th, and a sign went up on the 25th at the property on Donaldson Drive requesting a variance of the stream buffer on Bubbling Creek by Pulte Home Corporation. Um, I have talked with a few of the property owners, and um, no, the ones that I've talked to, and this includes Park Creek, Bubbling Creek, and the condominiums at the end of Hearts Mill Road. Uh, this, this request is for a variance to disturb 6,184.41 square feet within the outer 25 foot, foot portion of the stream buffer, which is a 75 foot stream buffer. Uh, it will be somewhat behind my house. I received a letter and several other uh, neighbors on Park Creek, but not everybody. My concern is that this is on a downhill slope, other people's concern also. They are requesting to grade the 25 feet, that's which is a third of the bu stream buffer that's been in effect for many years. Um, I know this because Danbury Park, they wanted to get a variance on that too, and it was not granted by DeKalb County. I was a part of that committee. If they want to grade that 25 feet, and there's obviously got to be some trees on it, 
This is a wooded area and it backs up to uh, the, the park. And uh, when I called the, the, and was told they wanted to grade that 25 foot, which I know there's got to be trees on it, uh, it would have to be in compliance with the tree, tree ordinance. And the plan is to plant shrubs as a barrier, which will create runoff permanently of probably chemicals that are into the stream, which you're going to have fertilizer, you're going to have probably pesticides, herbicides, whatever that uh, the landscaper uses. Um, the decision is going to is supposed to be made on November the 19th by the Planning Commission and uh, or the planner. And some of the neighbors, we are talking about getting a petition together to ob object to this. Uh, we feel like that, uh, and a, that the. Um, I was telling you to continue. Okay, that the uh, developer knew that this variant, that the 75 foot stream buffer was in place when they went before the planning commission and the board. I was present at both of those meetings, and, and no, nothing was requested as a variance of that time. So now they're coming back and wanting to take more property and really pollute the creek more than it is. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Storm. Thank you, Mayor. Ben, do you know what this nice lady is referring to? I don't have the exact details. Um, I'm aware of a uh, variance that has been submitted for Donaldson. This went initially went through a rezoning, if you recall. Was this the former Korean church property? Yes. Oh. I went through a rezoning. So they came through a rezoning, but they didn't tell us about the variances, and now they've come back and asked for variances? Well, it was, again, the, the rezoning came through um, the, the, a, a separate developer. Uh, now it appears that he has sold the property to uh, Pulte Homes. And obviously, I, I'm not exactly sure. I don't have the exact details to sort of provide you with the, the sort of the actual information associated with the request. Uh, but I believe that is correct, that it's it's grading only. There is no impervious associated <coughs> within the Adder 25. Um, being that it's, I believe then that would require, uh, I believe that's an administrative variance letter that she most likely received, um, which is just grading right. associated with the outer 25-foot portion. Right. Okay, and I think it, the grading may be associated with a tie-in to a sewer that's located on the back end of the property. Can you give us an update by email that next week and then copy Ms. Storm? Yes, I'll look into the information a little bit further and provide a uh, further you. explanation. And this is uh, going to the ZBA? No, Planning Commission. Just administrative is what Yeah, it's administrative it, variance. So okay. All right. Mrs. Storm, make sure you give Ben your email address. I have okay. it. Oh, you have it? Okay, just we get it. All right. Um, plugged in. Is there uh, any more public comment? Yeah, well, I have one comment. Public comment. Oh. All right. Uh -huh. I'm is there a member a of the public? <laughs> is there a motion? Well, on your mayor's oh, there's comments. No more, there's no more motions. Public, this is public comment period. Mayor's comments. I don't have any comments. Um, executive session. I don't think we need what? I would like to just, if you'll remind people to get out and vote, we've got voting this oh, yeah. week here. Brooklyn. Everybody needs to vote. Um, we have early voting here to the 31st, till Friday? Just till Friday. No, just till Friday. Yeah, Friday here? 31st. Okay. Yeah, 31st, right. Halloween. I'd like to say, um, next time we get together, um, there's going to be another council member at this table. Well, no, Plus, we're next week. We're, we're, right. we're, we have well, next there's only two candidates running. No, we're getting yeah. together. Oh, no. we're next Tuesday we're meeting again. Remember? Okay. So oh, that's back in a week. Yeah, back in a week. <laughs> um, high chance, though, there may be a candidate here sitting in. Oh, the, on the following meeting. Yeah, all right. Is there a I motion? Move, I move that we adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor of adjournment, signify oh, so by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Only while we should meet it.